Any mentioning in matter that's number one to five daily board six to twelve. Eleven to thirteen. Okay. Mr. Mrs. Rawal is here. So, so, yes. Ready? Serial number nine. Hmm. Serial number seven. On behalf of Mr. Darshan Gandhi, he has some medical issues in family. So he has filed a sick note. So may I request it for tomorrow? No, but tomorrow. May I request for next week? That matter right? has to be. It's been. 21st. Mr. Gandhi has filed a sick note. 21st. Yes. Hmm. Send Pharma. You want to? Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Suparkar is here. Maraj. You've been protected? I'll just check. Uh, You've been protected. They've been protected. You don't mind that being continued? In fact, this is limited. I have seen. Okay. Level 73923. Uh, for on behalf of the Lanin's Senior Standing Council, Mr. Nikunth Rawal, Mr. Karan Sangani seeks time <clears throat> to file affidavit and reply. Petitioner, since this is protected, protection shall continue till the filing of reply. Okay, it has been. Uh, this okay. So don't say it has been protected already to be posted. We'll keep this on 7th March for your uh, reply. Will that be okay? Fine. Seventh. One second. If, then uh, if in case there is a rejoinder, we'll post this uh, rejoinder if any shall come by 14th March. Let this matter go straight on 14th March. Well, for uh, SCA 67662 of 22, the similar order that will be the best part. See, remember nine. Nine? Yes, Prabhupada, I need some time for filing, sir. Rejoined in the matter. Mello, last week I got the rejoined for that settlement commission matter. Mello, uh, only next week, 20th or 24th. Manoj, we have some urgency. The pleadings are complete. They filed the reply only recently, and thereafter we have filed the rejoinder. This yes. is a case where there's some pronouncement had already been done and then there, yes. thereafter they've uh, chosen to again send it back. Yes. And your anxiety, if we rightly remember, was that uh, now once again also the new uh, body yes, which yes, has come also may not be in a position to act. So, so the right? new that's what you're saying. The date is not fixed, but it is treated as the pending application. Right. We'll keep it next week, but don't take time I next week. I only want so next week. 28th to zero. Please. Okay. So, uh, learned uh, advocate Mr. Varun Patel requires time to take instructions. There is an urgency made out by Mr. Bandit Suparkar to be posted on 28th of February to retain its number. 13 to 22, 23 to 33, 34 to 46. Serial number 42 to 45. This pertain to 13, 14, 14, 15. See, wherever uh, uh, 13, 14, 14, 15 are concerned, we have passed number of orders. And the same order will be passed in those orders. If advocates are present, good. If they're not present, it is fine. Uh, 15, 16, we have been, uh, uh, since we have not done it for that, then onwards, we'll be hearing the advocates. Though we had already issued the notice on the uh, uh, limitation part, but we shall be here. 13, 14, you may not worry on 14, 15. Online. 47 to 57. You know, may mention serial number 50, 52, and 53. Mm -hmm. They are uh, 2013, 14. Uh, 50 is 14, 15. 52 is thir 13, 14. Lord. You really think we have great memory? We'll remember all this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. 51 and 51. We'll just take care of it. Hmm. Lordships on that. 58 to 69. Okay, I think 60 and 61. Hmm. So in this matter, yesterday, you know, we can have a petition. I was filing this. Yeah. And they were filed in this. Completely on different ground. And it was filed in several grounds. One of the grounds. Then we had a 
it has been already considered and declined then that ground is not considered good good this matter good this matter came up you would have missed out on that in that case. Otherwise, if we talk about this, we finally will maybe issue this matter. It's an error. It's an error. I'm surprised that uh, that aspect has not been considered in MA. But there are also several MAs were decided together and hmm. like some that group which we had decided. So anyway, we'll take it. What hmm? serial number? Fifty nine. Fifty. Yes. Pertaining to land grabbing ecological. What do you want? May I request them for priority or it may be taken? Just keep it in mind. Yes, good. 70 to 80. 81 to 93. 19. 87. Coming from outside. Can you request for a priority here? Certainly. Certainly. Bear it in mind. 94 to 99. Lord, may I mention for serial number 97, it's a CA for condonation of delay. So, could we take up as a plan? Oh, like. What is the amount of delay? Delay is uh, more than 100 years, but I was pursuing an uh, alternative remedy by a miscellaneous application before the tribunal. Yes, uh, which uh, ITO? Pardon? Which, which district? Which? Which district? District. That is Amdabad. 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 Uh, that is Mesana. Sorry. Mesana. Mesana, Mr. Patel will be so there or uh, Mr. Patel. Sangani will be there? This is Mrs. Rawal will be there. All right. Just go through that 97. If the delay is not something where you are objecting to, we'll allow it. Yes. Okay. I will give a copy. Of give, the... give him a copy. Oblate. 100 to 104. 105 to 13, 114 to 23, 124 to 31, 132 to 39, 140 to 50. It is same ESS network for modeling 50. The additional one of the SSC was also direct and the notice was against direct person. So it is a, to the dead person, the notice has been issued and it is 1415 both together. So two grounds. All right. Mr. Sangani can look into that. Hmm? Just check there. You can provide him a copy so that he will look into that. 151 to 60. 161 to 67. With your headship's kind permission, may I make a mention? Serial number 165. 165. Notes, I would be requesting for priority. Notes, there is urgency. This is a tender matter. It was specifically kept today, looking to the urgency. Uh, notes. Immensely please. Please. Yes. Please tell the other side. Notes, Mr. Uh, Joshi is already there. Uh, In fact, they have filed the reply as well, looking to the order. Right. Oblige me. Yes, good 168 to 75, 176 and 77. Your number 173. Sorry. 173. 173. Three. Three. Yes. Oh, it's a delay condonation application. The notice has not been received back. Yet. No, there's no delay condonation. This is tax appeal 684. This is a tax appeal 684. There is no delay condonation application. Is that the one you're ma mentioning? Sorry, 190. All right. <laughs> 178 to 81, 182 to 88, 189 and 190. 190, that's the So you're seeking priority there? This rule has been served. I don't know who is appearing. The Jamnagar who appears? <clears throat> Mrs. Rawal appears. All right. What is the amount of delay? Uh, I, 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 I'll call for the papers. Okay. Just call for the papers and give him. If it is minuscule, you can look into that. Sure. Hey, man, just with my loss. Requesting for circulation for 13, 14 matters for tomorrow, if convenient. Um, no, let it go Monday. Monday. Let it go Monday. There are other hmm? two matters that also are Fine. Okay. Okay.
Uh, the direct text is matter. Let it be Monday, Tuesday. Okay. With my Lord's permission, may I mention for urgent circulation of a note for speaking two minutes for seeking a correction in the date of listing. I mean, uh, it has been transcribed at 16.10.23 in the order instead of 16.2.23. My Lords have been pleased to adjourn the matter to 16.2. For Sorry tomorrow. for that, yes, permitting. I am obliged. I am able to mention it. The one PL already filed says long back, Lord. She already transcribed and copy already supplied, Lord. She may be for day after tomorrow on Monday, Lord. She. What has been supplied? Translated copy? I already supplied, but it's not listed. It says long back, Lord. She may request on day after tomorrow on Monday. I think there was a request uh, uh, from the bar uh, president that uh, the translated copies may not be necessary. Now already supplied, Lord Chief. <laughs> so, the, yes, no, fine. If you supplied it, good enough. We'll not ask you to take it back. No, you're not but uh, <laughs> at, the, at the same time, it was his request. Oh, well, so, uh, maybe in one of the matters today, you can make a request. We can tell registry not to then follow it. So that you know, may not put it. Monday or Tuesday, Lord, and it convenient, Lord. All right. Gajar Bhai, not Monday, Tuesday. Let it be Wednesday. Lord. We have a little bit of function. My people lost his permission to move an patent rate petition for tomorrow for the reason vessel has been seized under Caesar Mamo by the customs. And we have already made the representation as indicated in the order itself, but we are not passing the order. Vessel is incurring expense of about 25 to 30 lakhs every day for tomorrow. And as I understand, matter will come. Before your lordship's one. Why would it, it come? It is under here? the Customs Act. Caesar Manual is passed under Section 115. Uh, customs uh, would, I think, go to the bench of justice, uh, they say. Yes, but I was told that there are lordship to mention only reference. So I'm just mentioning to be on safer side before. No, the just the references. Justice, so. No. It is, uh, I think, the entire uh, matter will, I mean, all, all uh, indirect taxes would go to uh, justice, uh, they say, court. Unless there is some. Uh... Yes. yes so because yes. I was before that. It would go to know. Justice this side. No? Well, it's mentioned reference. That is why some confusion. So I was informed that I should be mentioned before your lordship. No, matters relating to Central Excise, Customs, and Gold, gold References. So the, if it is a customs matter, it will have to go to the. I understand that. I was also. But so it's a, just a reference is, a, is an issue. Then maybe you know it can be clarified because this is the how the roster yes. is always made. I understand so, that I was also uh, carrying, but I was also told by one of no, the no, customers. Uh, Gajibai, oh, could you please ask? Uh, uh, could you please ask the register uh, Joshi? Because I think there won't be any confusion in the minds of the bench. Maybe you know some uh, uh, the advocates' interpretation uh, may be different. Here, all matters were listed before no, no. the bench, which was carrying. no difficult then i will mention you you need, you need to make a mention sir land acquisition matter the only uh, objection is translation copy my lady that no, no. Be... That, that can be dispensed with okay. sir you have a when it, which which number is it is it today's board? Uh, no, no, my lady. It's uh, I'm seeking circulation. I do not permit it. If it's convenient, per permit it, and we can uh, tell the registry also. Please tell registry that wherever it is uh, mentioned, uh, the translated copies uh, they may not be necessary anymore. Sorry, we're seeking circulation of two petitions. It was for sixty. Right? Hmm. But the issue is that for certain benefits granted to the sugar exporters have been taken back. For certain benefits which are already there have been withdrawn. The of the
We'll permit it on Friday. Okay. Uh, seeking urgent circulation for red pressure under recovery of deaths act. Malak. Sorry? Uh, recovery of deaths act. Malak, my auction is cancelled. I am the auction purchaser. Any day on Thursday or Friday, Malak. Friday it can be. Believe it. Great. Seeking circulation. Use the mic, please. Thank you. Mentioning on behalf of Mr. A.J. Yagnik, seek, seeking circulation of three land acquisition petitions which have filed long back. Uh, no objections are there. Translation copies are also supplied. May I request for tomorrow or day after? Permitted on Thursday. Grateful. Uh, the matter which I mentioned recently with respect to delay condemnation application, that there is 20 days delay in the application. 28 days? 20 days. 2 0. Oh, 2 0. Yes. No need to even look at uh, Mr. Asangani's node. Um, huh? <laughs> They're not looking at you, you know, for that is the 20 days we are allowing that. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, that that would be doing a travesty to our own uh, order when we say for 20. No, 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 no. Please, <laughs> okay. Okay. So, some of the way side court may be a catami. But sure, be in a roju side be uki to the yogi of being some of the motto. By Baji Avenuti for up permission of auto. Joshi Sapis is a mokia. Tamne Tamne Mokia. So, just send him with uh, one of our. Please take care. Hmm? And uh, if I uh, speak to register uh, uh, judicial and tell him. Let's take care of this over the references to Punjabi's Uh, we can take the fresh matters first. Hmm? We'll be taking up the fresh matters first. And uh, after once the fresh matters are over, we'll uh, start with number one. Lord. Admission matters number 15, Mr. Jamin Dave. Please, sir. Lord, sir. Lord, sir, the present civil application is for the further, further direction, wherein in the main petition. We have challenged the order passed under 148 AD of the Income Tax Act and the subsequent notice issued under 148 Lord Lordship, then after this honorable court has heard the applicant and passed an order issuing the notice. And then after the present applicant has served the notice to the other side respondent authority. However, despite the service of to the respondent authority, they have not filed their reply. And they, they and now they have issued notice under 144B for the completion of the assessment order for the assessment year 1819, which is at page number nine, your Lord sir. So you never participated in it? It was simply a notice. Did you participate in the uh, process? Lord, look at, let, let's look at your challenge. Please, sir. In the main petition. Please, sir. Please, sir. What are your prayers? Lord, if the annexer A is the 148AB notice, which has also been under the challenge. No, no, that is fine. We are right now looking at your main petition. There you challenge 148 notice and 148AD order. Please, Your Lordship. Correct. And this order and the notice on 7th April 2022. Please, Your Lordship. Correct. So, court simply issued the notice in August 2022. Did you participate? Lordship, then after we have, uh, Lordship, for that, I have to take the instruction for If you process. do not participate and they pass an order, how do you blame? Either you need to ask for some interim relief in the in the petition itself. Did you ask for the interim relief? Lordship, we have asked after after hearing the applicant on, on, on the ground of, uh, on the ground of that 148B uh, uh, notice was in which they have not given the clear seven days notice to the applicant and without giving the clear seven days of notice, they have issued the order passed under Maybe you have a genuine cause, but then the fact remains, you cannot blame the officer who has completed the assessment process. Please, Lordship. Because you never asked for any stay. 
he would Lots need to complete it, you know, by the time his uh, time was getting over or even otherwise in a routine course. Lord, at this stage, my only request before this honorable court is that let this notice maybe state for for the or the only for the purpose that this main matter may be heard on finality. Even otherwise, on merits also, Lord, 148 B notice, wherein they have not given the clear seven days notice, which is at page number 58. Wherein notice was issued on 16th of March. Who's appearing in this matter, the main petition? So you have, served, you have served aptly the, yes, the site. Yes, uh, direct service was served. Even mm. DS affidavit has been filed. All right. It is a Palanpur. Who will be appearing? And then Principal Commissioner Income Tax is Ahmedabad. But the Palanpur is uh, Office of Income Tax Officer. Uh, Mr. Sangani, you would appear or Mr. Patel would appear? In Palanpur, uh, Mrs. Raval would appear. Look, what has happened is that the notice here has been issued long back on 8th August. It appears that there's a due service, nobody has appeared. It was made returnable on 20th September. Now the notice under section 144B has been sent to them. They're before this court seeking some relief, interim relief. And they say the no clear seven days notice also has been issued. We need to intervene because we do not want a scenario. You can just go through the file, 2.30, we will hear you. Provide him a copy, you can take the court's Please, sir. Much of this. Yes, and the Brother Justice uh, but shows me that the service has been already effective. Um, yes, in the month of August, 2022. Please provide Mr. Sangani this file. Please, sir. we can go through it. Sixteen. The Tushar Hamani Leonard, senior advocate. Fifteen, sixteen. The usual British rounds of preferred. Uh, This challenge here is under Article 226 to the notice under Section 148, dated 28 July 22, as well as the order dated 27 July 22, passed under Section 148 AD of the Income Tax Act, 1961 ITA clear in after, seeking to reopen the income tax assessment of the petition for assessment year 1516 on the ground that the notice is not sustainable under the law. Pay sought for are as follows. Para 7, we have heard the land senior advocate, Mr. Imani, insisted by Ms. Vaibhavi Parik. Essentially on the ground of limitation, as also on other grounds, this petition is challenged. Issue notice, better never on. Are you seeking any uh, yes, interim? Yes, all better. When is, when is it time getting barred. time barred on 30? 31st March. 31st. Yeah. If there are any gross facts, as they were yesterday, please bring it to our notice. My Lord, I'll, I'll, because I'll in that case, we would have some reservations I understand. after hearing the Under, I understood. But this is FNO transactions. You know? We'll cooperate and in the he can he may not pass Sir. the final order. We'll make it returnable on uh, 7th of March. Lord. 6th, 6th of March. 6th, 6th of March. 6th. Great. 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 Serial number 17, Tusha Rahmani, Leonard, Senior Advocate, with Mr. Rahmani. 1516, identical facts, earlier better. So, 28 July uh, 22 is the Notice under 148, self same date as 148 AD order. The prayer sought as para 7. This also will be made returnable on the 6th March. Interim relief. Great. Special cooperative. Hmm? And additionally, the uh, service through the email is permitted. This is also 15-16. 15-16. This is long-term capital gain. 30th July 22, under 148. 30th and self-same date is 148-80. 
prayers at para seven. The same order. Obliged. Nineteen. To share how many minutes? Can I do it? Fifteen, sixteen, bro. This is again identical matters have already been admitted yesterday. Okay. This is that Sadbau group, if my lordships recollect. Thirtieth July, twenty two, one forty eight, one forty eight A.D. What are the allegations and what is? Uh... Well, the allegation against me is that I Sadbau gave me certain subcontracts hmm. and uh, I carried out those subcontract work, which has ultimately been billed to the respective government clients. The department says that I did not carry out any work. Therefore, they say that you have earned three percent commission, and that too, my lord, on the amount which my lords would find on page forty-one. There's an allegation of the cash returned back to Sadbau, right? Yes, that is the allegation and that you did Veer, not. Sorry. Veer Procon. You yes, you you did not carry out the contract. You gave the money back to them, and that is page forty three seventy nine lakhs and odd amount. And at best, their case is three percent commission has been kicked back. But three percent commission of a, a roughly eighty lakhs rupees also would not work out more than two uh, lakhs thirty nine. Yes, that's you say it is below fifty lakhs. Yes. But this technically their case is of eighty lakhs of rupees. Therefore, I cannot uh, not plead that it is below fifty lakhs. But according to you, seventy nine point seventy three percent thereof. Yes, he himself says page forty nine. My laws would find on the top three percent mm -hmm. commission is mentioned. That because that was the allegation. But that apart, my lord, this is this assuming that this was there was a commission, my lord. How can it become asset, my lord? That is going to be the principal argument. That this being a case of lot more than three years, and therefore the asset criteria itself is not satisfied. Learned so, senior advocate Mr. Imani, assisted by Ms. Babavi Parik, has urged that. The allegations of cash written back to Mrs. Sadbhav Engineering Limited and Mrs. Veer Prakorn Limited, if it's considered. Even if it is considered, then the alleged commission income earned by the SSC would be two lakh thirty nine thousand one twenty nine, being the three percent commission of seventy nine lakhs seventy thousand nine sixty. He also further has argued that. From the very tenor of allegations, the amount of commission would not fall under the definition of asset as per the statute. The sanction also you see is it's not been approved. Fifteen, sanction. sixteen, they have taken the appropriate sanction. Noticing. Great. Number twenty, Sushar Hamani, and it's senior rocket with his paper. Thirteen fourteen. It's thirteen fourteen. It's petition in Article two twenty six of the Constitution of India. Referred to challenge the notice uh, dated thirtieth July twenty two issued under section one forty eight of the Income Tax Act nineteen sixty one. I take it in after as well as the order dated thirtieth July twenty two. Passed under Section One Forty Eight AD, seeking to reopen the income tax assessment of the petition for assessment year two thousand fourteen to three, on the ground that the notice and the order are bad in law and without jurisdiction. The prayers sought for by the petitioner are as follows. Para seven. The urgent notice made returnable forthwith. Since the issue is uh, covered by the decision of this court, 
Surat, who will be appearing? Mr. Sanyani? Who will be appearing for Surat? Mrs. Rawal will appear. We have requested Mrs. Kalpana Rao, assisted by Mr. Karan Sangani, to appear for the respond. We have heard learned senior advocate Mr. Himani, assisted by Mr. Vaibhavi Parikh, Mrs. Rao, the senior standing counsel, with Mr. Karan Sangani. <laughs> Noticing, uh, focusing on the issue of the limitation as the assessment year here is 2014-15 without giving the separate reasons, the rules given in the Kinara. Allowed watching the notice and to impure not the vote. Great. 21, Pusar Hemani, the next senior. This is 14 This is again 14-15, identical order. The date of uh, notice, 30th July 22, and the date of order of force will say in our okay. 22, Pusar Hemani, the next senior. 14-15. This is 14-15. The date of notice here is also 30th July 22 and uh, 148 AD also same. The prayers also para 7. Identical submissions and the order. Kinara has given Kinara to many. Kinara, my lord. Taking yeah. everyone to Kinara, my lord. That's what. Yeah. <laughs> Department to Kinara. <laughs> <laughs> 23, Tushar Hamani, the next level. 14 15. It's 14 15. So, same 30th July 22, both notices. 24, 13 14. This is 13 14. Please. 2000, the 30th July 22, and 148 AD and 148 order both, same date. 25 14 15 14 15 148 is 30th july 22 and uh, 148 ad also is the same date 26 14 15 this 14 15 27 july 22 is the note notice under 148 and 148 AD is also 28 July. 27. So the 14 top line is in, in, all, in all matters. 14 15. The notice is dated 30th July 22 and order 148 AD is identical. So it's a Kinara. 28. Please, this is 15, 16, not identical to 19. Uh, Sadbao, this is the same year, same group, and same allegations. Allegations of uh, returning the cash yes without actually working. That is the allegation. And here also, and what, are, what is the amount involved? Here also, the amount is 78 lakhs, mm -hmm. and the same allegation of 3%. All right. Here only the figure will change, which will be uh, according to Mr. Himani's submission, 78 lakhs 00, 373. The 3% is uh, calculated is 2 lakhs 34,012. As the allegation is the same of the commission of 3% for providing the cash back to the Sadbao group. The same 6 March. Please. 29. This is 15, 16. 15, same, group? same group, 30th July 148 notice and 148 AD notice is 30th July. Is the same allegation? 79 lakh 62,861. Page 42. This amount is 79, 62, 861. 3% of which will be worked out to 
How much it I, comes to? Yes, I. I think somewhere you have made a mention. Yeah, we have mentioned it. Hmm. Contact. Seventy nine, sixty two, eight, sixty one is the subcontract work, and the three percent of that. Anyway, we'll come to around whatever is this. You can just calculate it, but it won't be more than three legs, or you can say less than three legs. Lot. Seventy nine, sixty two, eight, sixty one. Similar order. Six March. So the interim relief will be restricted up to six March and uh, permit, permitted to even serve through the email. Great. Serial number 13 SN the wait here. 1718. This is for 1718. So copy has been the given copy to was, uh, over. to his clerk. And I have got a signature, Vijay Thakura. Two third. Thirty-one. S N debate here. Lord, it is two thousand fifteen sixteen. An allegation is with regard to the transactions. Are you already placed on record? Lord, the I was directed to file the type copy of 32 to 52 that I have already placed on record. That is a report from the ADIT investigation wing. They were not legible and then... That's uh, there, therefore, 54, it starts from 54A. Uh, the entire report has now been placed on record. All right. But it is time back. And another is that the allegation in the notice and 148D, they are different parties. No, no, page 13, my lords would find. That the allegation is that you have a transaction with one SK traders, proprietor Kamlesh Shah. This is an unexplained uh, transaction, right? Yeah, that is the, the, the first in the, re, the reasons recorded issued under the old regime. Then, my lord, on page 35, my lord would find on page 35, mm -hmm. the allegation is some other party in the notice under 148B. On page 35, he gives the as the above ledger account for 13 financial year 1314 Nirman multiplied so sold goods to SK traders. Now, this is allegation that I have sold the goods. I mean, if it is a sale, it is accounted for in my books of accounts as per the even ledger given just above. And I mean, on page 58. In my reply, I have pointed out that at different stages, you are pointing out different allegation. Now the party comes, met tech, that is on page 58, Roman 2, you know. Roman 2, page 58. In the information provided by you, that is verification details and case related information details of inside portal and supplementary appraisal report number so and so dated so and so of the ADIT Surat. No, where you we have, uh, we have found information that we have entered into transactions of so and so with MacTech. So now from SK traders, it comes to MacTech.
So what are the what are the allegations? They said you enter into the transactions with Mrs. Mactech. Mactech. But I even and, I even entered into transaction with SK traders, not with Mactech. Mm -hmm. That I point out, and he alleges escapement with regard to Mactech. That is ultimate conclusion in impugn order. So you want to say that you, you are saying that we are supplying the educational items. We are supplying. We these are our sales, and that mm -hmm. is accounted for in my books of accounts. And we have offered, and my lord, ultimately on the impugn order on page seventeen, my lords would find in para three seven zero uh, one seven. I'm sorry, one seven. That is one forty eight D order. Mm -hmm. The he concludes like this on perusal of the information received. It is seen that in the search in case of so and so is also not doing any genuine sale and purchase of goods and has carried out total transaction of 7 crore 56 lakhs with MAC tech. And therefore, there is an escapement. And even in para 8, ultimately, he also alleges unexplained transaction with MAC tech of 7 crore 56 lakhs in all. So what is in the reasons record ultimately and is something different. He gives notice for something different and ultimately conclusion. Even if I point out in my reply that I have no transactions with MacTech, whatever transactions are with SK traders and data are by way of sales. So there is no escapement of income. Therefore, on this ground also, you know, the input mm -hmm. notice and proceedings are and illegal. The limitation is one ground which you are always uh, pressing into service. Uh, Right. Pardon? So this is a 2015-16. Mm. So it goes on changing. So three, from three reasons, years, three years is the time, time limit for issuance of the notices. One ground. Only one ground with escalators. Petitioners before this court seeking to question and challenge the action of the respondent authority. In issuing the notice in Section 148 on 31st July 22, after 20, uh, 20, 31st July 22 of the Income Tax Act, huh? I take it in after, after disposing of the objections and passing the order under Section 148 AD. Seeking to reopen the assessment. Of the income of the petitioner for this year 1516. Essentially, on the ground of the time limit for issuance of the notice and it is urged that uh, notice under section 148. Shall be issued if three years have elapsed from the end of assessment year, unless the case falls under clause B of section 1491. Amended provision of 149, amended provision of 149 by the Finance Act 2021. Is come into effect from 1421. Others sought to be relied upon. It is further urged that the alleged escape income does not represent the asset, but are in fact the entries of the alleged transactions as bogus. Prayers sought for are as follows. Page, um, sorry, where are 10? You've heard the learned advocate, Mr. Devetia. It's taken us through the pleadings as well as the documentary evidences along the line of the memo of petition he has argued for us. Notice returnable on 6 March. Are you seeking any intermediate? Are you cooperating with the assess assessment? Cooper no, are you cooperating with the Yes, yeah, certain, certainly. It goes with it. Certainly. The same relief and say that we shall continue to cooperate before the returnable debt no final. Yes. Lord, oblige. Thirty-two. Uh, Mr. AJ Yakni.
please my lord when here in 2017 18 certain awards came to be passed uh, which were challenged before this honorable court uh, due to certain factors which were not complied with the honorable court had quashed all these awards and remanded back to the land acquisition officer subsequently since 2018 the uh, the order passed by this division bench has not been complied with this is the petition for implementation of those uh, orders but in similar petitions there are other petitions as well the notices have been issued these matters are coming up on 23rd of february there is a statement also made by the nhai as well as the state that they have forwarded interse and they are to make a statement on 23rd and it is arising out of the same district different village all these petitions were piled together so this somehow was left out that's and this is the latest development in those petitions which has now it will be the national uh, highway authorities or the state which will need to do the needful both inter say the state will have to forward it to the nhai subsequently nhai will have to uh, verify it and so they have not as yet forwarded N nothing has done uh, in this case you know, we are not aware about okay. because Who we haven't be appearing in cr paper are you aware as to what is happening in this earlier matters mm. the matter my lords in some matters awards have already been declared yesterday But for this very particular matter, I take instructions. Uh, okay. For this particular so for, play, for play, other play. matters, what had happened? Award has been already. I think a few of them award has been passed. I know. I did try to talk to my office in the morning. In mm -hmm. a few of them, award has been passed. It will be communicated to the claimants by today. Oh, no, for okay. this particular claimant, I know. I have to take instructions. Uh, so there was an issue of the redetermination of yes, the, the compensation. Yes, my lord. The Sonam Court had. Uh, yes. Directed in two thousand eighteen. Yes, Why has it taken such a long time? They needed to be heard and all. My lords, for some reason or the other, my lords, I, in, on, if this can be kept on twenty third along with the other matters, mm. I'll make a statement on that day as well. Right. Along Give with a the... copy to the land. You must have given an advance yes. copy to them. Yes, my lords, please. All right. So you file your reply. Have you filed in other matters no. where the notices have been issued in September two thousand twenty two? File your reply by twenty third. In fact, my lords, in quite a few matters, compliance has already been made. So if, Good, if, if you have not, but then even then you I can you can pass an order saying that this is the compliance that you made. Very well. If that is what you need very to well. do. Hmm? This special C double two eight three of two thousand twenty three. This is a petition. Preferred, seeking to question the non-action on the part of the respondent authority. in case of acquisition of the land for village sutodra taluka amur district baruch where the acquisition of the land was for the purpose of establishment of vadodara mumbai expressway the challenge was made to the award passed by the respondent competent authority oblique land acquisition officer district baruch in land acquisition case number 2 of 
by a common judgment dated 26-11-2018 by this court in SCA number 9224 of 2018 and allied matters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The petitioner had sought the redirection to redetermine compensation to be paid to the petitioner by respondents for an acquisition of land of expressway for which the possession had been long ago taken and the work of expressway is going on. They are sought for are as follows. Para 11. We have heard the learned. What's your good name? Vedant Rajguru. Vedant Rajguru. Uh, appearing for and behalf of Mr. A.G. Yagnik. As such, that a group of petitions for the similar reliefs have already been filed, being special CA 172 of 19 of 2022 and allied matters, where this court has issued the notice long back on 30th September. Listen, Mr. Vedant Rajguru. Those matters are coming up on 23rd of February. We have uh, also had the learned uh, AGP who had been given the advance notice. Or you can say advance uh, set of uh, documents. It is also an instruction submitted to us by the learned AGP that in some of the matters, the redetermination of the compensation has already taken place pursuant to the order of this court in SCA number 9224 9 of 2018 9 and allied matters. Mr. Trivedi has also submitted further that he would be in a position to place everything on record by 23rd, which may include the passing of an award in some of the matters. Let the affidavit and reply be filed without fail in these matters copy of which shall go 24 hours in advance to the other side. Considering the fact that the order of this court directing the authority consent to redetermine has been passed way back in the year 2018. Right? Yes, ma'am. It's 2018. 2018, ma'am. Yes. 26, 11, 18. He would, uh, Mr. Sail Trivedi, the learned AGP, would wait for, you will wait for a number one note. National Highway Authority will be represented. Only number one, one. One and two, sorry. One and two. <laughs> number three, uh, the direct services permitted through email. Mr. Nanavati comes as uh, an impaneled okay, advocate. Mr. Sir, will you copy send. or just send it through the email? You don't need to take a physical copy. Please, ma'am. Please, sir. Great. We take with that earlier, ma'am. Thirty-three, uh, so GH work. Uh, number thirty-three, and if your lordship can kindly also take up thirty-six to thirty-nine. Uh, thirty-six to thirty-nine. Yes, thirty-three, thirty-six to thirty-nine. Okay. Then, Lord, if your lordship, sir, kindly to take up two, four, one, five. Now this assessment of fifteen, sixteen. Apart from other contentions, with the common thread which runs in all these five petitions is about 149 1B represented in the form of asset. And in fact, what has happened is this is this, is, to this is 15 16. 15 16. So, one is the time barring uh, aspect. So, three years, so three beyond years, three years. Beyond three years. So, therefore, yes, 149 1B represented in the form of asset. So, now if we look at, in fact, what has happened is earlier 148 issued thereafter in view of Ashish Agarwal. But the matter goes back 148A, small b. Verbatim, same reasons. But nevertheless, I'm not taking, but please go to that 148 AB order, AD order, page 21. What would you say of uh, the Supreme Court's order? We have taken a stand. We just would like to know from uh, your side. Yes. 
So, uh, so Supreme Court uh, at the relevant point of time uh, had said that we're keeping all uh, aspects open Lot. for Intro the other side to including, including the aspect of 149. Correct. So it was open for both the sides to agitate to all those issues. Lot. What do you have to say on that? Well, my understanding is that the notice is issued between 1 for 2021 and mm -hmm. 30th of June 2021. Just referring to Tola. 1 4 21 2 to 30th of June 21. Hmm. Because the revenue issued notices on the understanding of Tola extending the time limit. Correct. But the Honorable Supreme Court said that now this provision has come into effect 1 4 21. Therefore, don't treat this as 148 notices. Treat them as 148A small b. And then you comply 30 days, etc. Meaning thereby for all practical purposes, if I am sitting on 30th of June 21, for all purposes, it is a notice under AB, 148 AB. So on that day, whatever is the provision, so if at all that three years period has gone, then 149 1B will apply. 149 1B requires represented in the form of asset. But since your Lordship has already seen that provision time and again, I... So that's the fundamental requirement. And again, of course, the new provision is the information suggesting escapement. It's not pure and simple that information received and pocket to pocket, it is handed over to the SSC to give a response. Once that information as per the criteria, one, two, four, small Roman one, two, four are received, then he'll have to analyze that is this information suggesting escapement by the SSC? So these are the requirements which will have to be read into all those notices. Is the time limit since this is six years is something uh, here? That, yes, that, that 15, is with regard to the first proviso to 149. Hmm. That you look at, you look back as to under the unamended provision, could you have issued notice sitting on, let's say, 1st of April 2021? Could you have issued notice as per the first proviso of the, the amended provision beyond six years? The answer would be no. I am told their lordships have taken a view on, taken, on that those. That we have lines. taken for 13, 14, 14, 15. Yes. So for those two years, we have already taken the yes, view. Yes. But for uh, other years, of course, uh, uh, we are issuing the notice and then that can be. No, those go out of beyond the period of six years. So they, those go. But 15, 16, 15, 16 will not. In fact, 15, 16 also that, that controversy will still remain. But nevertheless, I am now pitching the case that. On the assets. Represent in the form of asset. That's the mandate. My further understanding is when you, because this notice you have to treat it as issued in 2021 for all practical purposes. And only the procedural requirement of clause B, furnishing information or the details, person to Ashish Agarwal. At that point of time, you cannot now, the revenue cannot take recourse to the larger definition of asset. Had the notice been issued after 1422, that larger definition of asset would apply. But at the relevant point of time on 1421, the asset was defined. This is the asset. So that also controversy would definitely arise as to which definition to take. My understanding is that for you'll have to freeze that date of issuance of first notice between that period as I indicated, 1st of April to 30th of June. In fact, when I had Read Ashish Agarwal, this issue had cropped in my mind that what happens in view of the subsequent amendments. But then I tried, we'll assist your lordships as when the time comes. So this is one of the contention, of course, but there are others. But underlying for all the three years, 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18. But what so done? this is uh, uh, the same SSC? It is the same SSC? Uh, uh, two SSCs, individual and HUF. Hmm. Just as Summarize what are the contentions. So, all right. So here, uh, uh, 238723. Yes. First, I have said in scrutiny assessment dealing in shares offered and accepted a business income. In fact, factually, no exemption claim towards long term capital gain at 1038. Same reasons were uh, now given under 148AB. Then no analysis by the AO as to how the information revealed escapement. It's as I said, information received straight on passed on to the SSC. 
then I point out that the information does not pertain to me. Factually, I so have not. Here, have you been given the information? You not been yes, yes. You've been given. I've been. But Manod, some of the files were truncated, not open. I'm not making an issue. But factually, that information itself did not did not pertain to me. Let apart pointing out the escapement. So that is merit again. That is merit. But as I said, the common thread running in all the three years is asset. So which, according to you, it doesn't fall into that definition of an asset. Yes. Because you'll have to identify. Subsequently, lordships have a 1422. That asset definition is not enlarged, if I may say so. But when we are looking at 1421 to 30th of June 21, and person to Ashish Agarwal, only that definition will have to be seen with regard to asset. Not the finance 2021? 21. That's right. 21, not 22. If your lordship would like, if I can clarify more. Certainly. Please see 149.1, small b, and at the footnote, lordships will find the prior to substitution. Hmm. Yes, three years, but not more than 10 if years. If three years, but not more than 10 years have elapsed from the end of the relevant assessment year, unless the assessing officer has in his possession books of account or other documents or evidence, now kindly note, which reveal that the income chargeable to tax represented in the form of asset which has escaped assessment amounts to or is likely to amount to 50 lakh or more for that. And the amended provision, if three years but not more than 10 years have elapsed from the end of the relevant assessment year, unless the assessing officer has in his possession books of account or other documents or evidence which reveal that the income charge to tax represents the form of, please note, an asset, expenditure in respect of a transaction or in relation to an event or occasion or an entry or entries in the books of account which has escaped assessment. So that has come from 1422. So this is particularly an asset expenditure in respect of transactions relation to an event or occasion or an entry or entries in the entry books. Or or entries so, so if the assessing officer has in possession either of the three hmm. and the escapement is more than 50 lakh, then he assumes jurisdiction, not otherwise. In fact, as I said, well, this is one of the contention which runs through all the five uh, petitions. But in fact, in my case, in the notice, it is said escapement is more than a lakh of rupees. In the How notice, much is it? Here it is more than 50 lakh. There's no difficulty. I'm not, but I'm just indicating that all the notices, it says it is more than 1 lakh rupees. He'll have to identify that because of these entries, the escapement is more than 50 lakh or whatever that amount. It doesn't happen anywhere. I'm sorry? It doesn't happen anywhere or they've not pointed out anywhere. No, no, no. In the, on the contrary, please see the notice. Uh, Please see page one zero. Sorry, one zero one zero four. Hmm. This is that notice under one forty eight A B, and please see page one zero five. No, which which method are you taking? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I was referring to special C A two four one five, because that is assessment year fifteen sixteen, in the case of individual assessment. One zero four. You want us to see? Please, ma'am. Yes. Page 104 28 September, no, is that 148 AB mm -hmm. in consequence of Honorable Supreme Court judgment. Mm -hmm. And at page 105, yes. In fact, Manod, please also for my satisfaction, go to clause 3 on page 105. Analysis of information collected received. On periodical and analysis of information available on record, it is noticed that the SSC has entered into financial transactions exceeding the taxable limits. The SSC has undertaken transactions as per the details given in the following chart. However, despite making this financial transaction, the SSC has not too late. But in fact, no analysis worth the name. What is the information? How the income has escaped assessment? 
then para 6 para 5 findings of the eom during the year under consideration ssc undertaken following financial transaction type of transactions bogus ltcg has been claimed by the ssc which is factually incorrect as i pointed out more than rupees 1 lakh In fact, because each and every point, our submissions are there, which I have just tabulated in a bullet point in the, in the chart, which I have given just now. That in the scrutiny assessment, all these transactions verified. So actually, I have not claimed long-term capital gain under 1038. And I don't know, they have accepted one format. Possibly they may have to think over that format also while issuing notice under 148. But page 19, if my, I'm sorry. So here they've seen it's uh, more than one leg. They say more than one leg. But what the information which suggests escapement, they will have to analyze that you have entered into, let's say, 50 crore of transaction. I find 10 crore worth them as bogus. As I said, so what has happened is this bulk of information would have been given to the assessing officers. I don't find, find fault with them. And the time limit was also too short. But then at least some semblance of application of mind that you have entered into this modus operandi. This is the transaction and this is the escapement. Only three, at least, I would say, broad uh, observations. It cannot be that this information and therefore I believe that income escaping is more than one lakh. And in fact, this format also, I think they should pay 19 if my lords may kindly see. This is the 148 notice issued. On page 19 is that 148 impute notice. 149? One, page, page 19, I'm sorry, page 19, 1-9. Paragraph 1, I have the following information in your case or in the case of the person in respect of which you are assessable under Income Tax Act, assessment of 15, 16, and they have checked the last item. Information which requires action in consequence of the judgment of the Honorable Supreme Court is the case of Ashish Agarwal. Now, that is not the criteria of 148 or 148A. But that information is now well tabulated from those sources the lordships have gone through the, 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 the provision. Those, the, let's say, the inside portal, or it is that uh, that trigger is there, all those one, two, four items are there. But this is not the information. The Supreme Court will not give the information. The department would not have... Uh be to your guidance now. No, no, I'm just indicating that possibly they need to just uh, re reword this 148 notice because the special civil application 1516 The prayers sought for by the petitioner are as follows. Para 7. We've heard the learned senior advocate, Mr. Butt, Mr. Manish Butt, assisted by the learned uh, advocate, Mr. Work. Was uh, 
strenuously urged that in the notice under section 148, the information indicated can hardly be said to be the information as this is in consequence of the judgment of or Honorable Supreme Court in case of Union of India versus Asya Sagrawan, 444 ITR, page 1. He has further urged before this court that in absence of any analysis by the assessing officer as to how the information revealed the escapement There does not appear to be any information pertaining to the SSC since he has not purchased any shares through off market transactions. He emphasized, <laughs> apart from the issue of the time barring notice, that AO has not given any preliminary finding also. that he had in his possession the books of accounts or other documents which revealed that income chargeable to tax represented in the form of asset which had escaped the assessment. This does not fall within the criteria of information as per explanation of 1 to section 148. Okay. Issue notice, returnable on. To make it returnable on, this is the assessment will be getting time barred by 30. It will be time barred. 6 March, this part will be time. It's going to put the time barred. 13th March, 13th March. Let the March. Petitioner cooperate with the proceedings of assessment. Final order of assessment shall not be passed before Great. the returnable date. Oblige. You may be on file. Safe. In all of them, this is going to be your arguments, right? Yes, yes. This is 1516, uh, 2415. In the chat, I have what I have done here. But petition wise, uh, this is 15. I have mentioned the special say number. Okay, uh, assessment year 2415 is 1516, 2413, 16, 17, 2387 is 1516, and 2408 is 16, 17, and 2414 will be 17, 18. Immensely grateful, much of this. Thirty-four, Bhumik Dolaria. My lordships, uh, this petition is for AY sixteen seventeen. What is impugned is one forty-eight AB AD and one forty-eight. And the compass of this petition is extremely narrow. Yes. The relevant prayers are on page 21. Yes. What Prayer is A is for Cushing of B. Prayer B is by mistake written as 148. It is actually 148 AD. The annexure B pertains to 148 AD notice. And annexure C is 148. D is prayer for interim. You are alleged to be a shell company. L Ladyship, I am alleged to be a shell company, but uh, I'm, I'm not getting into that aspect at all out here because that is something to happen during assessment and assessment would happen. Uh, Lordships, I'm before you for a very limited purpose today. What is, uh, if I may just take my loss through the facts of the case. 
Hmm. And then, of course, through Ashish Agarwal and the act, it is a very short uh, thread that I wish to bring out. 148 is issued against me. Hmm. Pre Ashish Agarwal. Hmm. I ask for reasons for reopening. 143.2 is issued to me. Uh, if if I may just take my lords through those annexures at that time so that it is easier to thread it together. My lords, uh, the 148 notice. Hmm. The old is at page 60. 1660. Does my lords have it? Yes. Lords. The date is 36, 2021. Subsequent to this, an extra F that is at page 61. I request reasons recorded as per GK and drive shafts. The typed copy is at 61 AB. It is nothing different. Now, Annexure C, which is uh, page 62, is her Annexure G, which is at page 62. The recorded reasons are given to me. They are given to me uh, in form of 143.2 notice. And at Annexure H, which is at page 74, I give a substantial reply to it as per the old regime in light of GK and drive service. Hmm. Now, my lords, if I may bring my lords to what has happened post Ashish Shagarwal before taking my lords to the judgment. We are aware of that. Uh, you can just tell us as to what is happening. 148 case. AB is issued to me. Hmm. I do not receive it. But that is also not extremely material for the purpose of this petition. What happens is 148 AB is issued to me in light of Ashish Shagarwal. I do not reply to it within two weeks as stipulated under the judgment and 148 AD order is passed ex parte without considering the submissions that are already on record. I am saying that this action of passing 148 AD without considering my submissions that are already on record, my objections that are already on record and the notice issued prior to Ashish Agarwal is against the word and spirit of A. Ashish Agarwal, B of 148 AD of the act. Now the act mandates 148 AD that the entire record needs to be considered before passing of the order. And if I have passed, uh, if I made these submissions, then of course they are already on record. Now 148 AD order does not even refer to him furnishing reasons recorded to me. What they proceed in 148 AD is to treat it like a de novo notice. So after Ashish Agrawal, when the Supreme Court had directed... No. That all information is to be given to everybody. Malot. is to be treated as 148AB. Malot. Have you been provided with the information? I, it was uploaded on the portal. All, so you got it. Right? I, I say, Malot, I did not get it. But, no, uh, but no, that is once, not relevant for this. uploaded aspect. in the portal, how do you say that you did not get Malot, it? what happens is for service, they have to send me a message or an email also with the portal. Now, I have not received that. But I'm not agitating that in anyway, this writ petition. Anyway, your reply was already there. My re reply was already there and that has not been considered. Why do you say that? Well, it's because the 148 AD rec order records. So if I may take... They have said that you there yes, is no Malaz. reply? Yes, ma'am. Let us look at it. Uh, Malaz, just one thing. At Annex page 23 is the 148 AB notice. Hmm. That is uh, pursuant to the order of the... Yes, ex okay. Just to point out. And Annex B, that's at page 25, is AD notice. Sorry? Annex B at page 25 is the AD notice that is impugned. Page 26, para 6. If my lord sees para 5 and 6. Where para 5 refers to Ashish Agarwal. Para 5? Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Page 26. As directed by the Honorable Supreme Court, information relied uh, was provided to the assessee on 23.5. The assessee was requested to make compliance against the aforesaid letter. And para 6 says in response to the aforesaid letter dated 23-5, no compliance was made by the SSE within the prescribed period, which concluded that SSE has nothing to say in this matter and did not have any plausible explanation in this regard. Annexure 
And if I may take my logs to para three, that is the earlier page. Now, para three records that on basis of the affirm, uh, aforesaid information, this is before Ashish Agarwal, and after recording reasons to believe, a uh, notice under 148 was issued to me, uh, was issued to the SSE on 30th 6, 2021. But the fact that I asked for reasons recorded, the fact that reasons recorded were provided to me, and the fact that I have given substantial submissions in light of the reason provided to me does not find any mention in the order. 7.1 says, in view of absence of reply of SSC's uh, side, Malod. discussion made in this paragraph is uh, that is what they've categorically said that there's no reply of yours. Malod. Uh, in what way uh, you had uh, filed the reply? Show the reply. Um, it's at H at page 74. 74. This was in reply to the notice that was issued on me, which is at page 62, the notice that was issued to me under 143.2. Page 60? Uh, page Page 74 is my reply. Page 62 is the notice issued to me, including the reasons recorded. It's 143.2, right? Yes, my lord. My lord, even so this you, notice is not you mentioned. You responded to this notice. Yes, my lord. This is uh, dated what? 11-10-2021 at page 74. Hmm. So as such to the notice itself, you had not replied. To 148A B that uh -huh. was put subsequent to Ashish Agarwal have not, it is my case that I did not need to reply to it because of Ashish Agarwal itself. Uh, Lordships may just appreciate uh, one mm. aspect. Apart from, he's just trying to get the facts cleared. My lords. After once the information has been given to you in the notice 148AB, they say treat that as a 148AB notice. Yes. It was that's what Supreme Court said and yes. then you'd been issued that notice. Yes. And once you, you were issued this notice, they then had come to 148.80, but they did make a mention of the fact that though you'd been issued the notice, you never replied. So yes. in absence of your reply, this is uh, what they have then decided. In absence of the Spera reply. 7.1 is very, very clear. Melod. So they, they are not incorrect when they say that. Had this been a case where you had actually replied to it, they have not taken into consideration. You're right. I mean, this could have been also one of the grounds which you see that there has been a violation of principle of natural justice. Also. Malad, the para 7, 7 is... 7.1. 7, 7 is, is a part of their information. It is not a part of my reply. We, we are we're trying to check your submissions. Malad. That whether you have actually filed any reply to the notice under section 148AB. Malad. That you have not. Uh, I have not provided provision, but I uh, 148AB, Malad. 148AB, I have not filed reply. This new notice that comes, I have not. The two weeks notice that is given to me in pursuance of Ashish Agarwal, I have not. It is my case, I have not received it. That is why I have not. But notwithstanding that, I state that the mandate of the section, they have to consider what has already happened because it does not refer to information in AD. It refers to the record. And my reply forms a part of the record, especially in light of two paragraphs of Ashish Agarwal. My lords, just for reference, I'm handing over Ashish Agarwal, but my yeah, lords are this, already acquainted with it. This is a reply uh, to the 142. The original 148, which is now, as per Ashish Agarwal, treated as 148AB. So that reply was already there. That reply is always there and it is not mentioned. It starts from where the reply? Uh, this is annexure H again, page 74. It is a substantial reply and uh, it also has evidences that are given. 
26 AS consideration. I say that I'm not a shell company. I show where purchase transaction has happened. I say that I have not carried on this thing because I'm in the real estate business. And until I complete which, a project. Which paragraph? Which page? One of that page 75. Below room in three. Yeah. It says during the year under consideration, the SSC company has purchased an immovable property at uh, this this area in Dehradun and it has paid stamp duty of this amount for the for, amongst the following three co-owners. Copy of sale deed duly registered is enclosed. Copy of ledger accounts has been enclosed. Company, SSC company has recorded transaction of purchase of immobile property of 10 odd crores. Stamp duty, incidental charges. The same can be verified from audited balance sheet and PNL, which is a part of ITR. And the same has been declared as stock in trade. Malaz, I will take my lots to 148 AD order and show why this is relevant. Keeping All in right, view so the in, primary business of the company. In short, your 11th October 21 reply has not been taken into consideration. Malots. It was already on record, right? Malots. That's fine. So that's one one uh, area that you are wanting to say. What is another argument? Malots, that is my main I, area. I'm saying that the action under 148 AD now, if they do not consider this, is in violation of principles of natural justice and against the Ashish Agarwal order. And I, I will show Malots why. Uh, para 28.1, Malods has the copy of the order. 28.1, 28 this is page 632. Please read. Malods, Please read. It says that the impugned section 148 notices, which were uh, issued under unamended section 148, which was subject matter of the writ petitions, shall be deemed to have been issued under 148A of the IT Act as substituted by Finance Act 2021 and construed or treated to be show cause notices in terms of 148AB. Because that means the first 148 that they issue to me, that becomes 148 AB by this. It doesn't matter what you name the notices after that or my reply. So this reply essentially is a reply to 148 AB notice issued to me. And it ought to be considered. Well, it's uh, 148A of the Act. Just, just the section I would like to take um, lots through. It is fairly narrow.
148 A B, if I may read, it says provide an opportunity of being heard to the SSC with prior approval of the specified authority by serving upon him a notice to show cause within such time, etc., etc., as to why a notice under 148 should not be issued on basis of information that suggests that income chargeable to tax has escaped assessment. In this case, for relevant assessment here. Now, the 148 notice has been deemed to be this. I'm not really impugning this because he seems to have information. What information is secondary? Adequacy of it is also secondary right now. But then C says, consider the reply of the assessee furnished, if any, in response to the show cause notice referred to in clause B. Now, my lords, if, as I said, that earlier notice is deemed to be 148 A B, then whatever I file as a reply to it, however I name it, essentially comes under 146, 148 A C. That is the scheme of the act. And in 148D, they say, before passing the order, decide on basis of material available on record, including the reply by the assessee. So in all senses, even if everything that is said by the assessing officer is correct during reassessment has been done, this is a material breach, not a procedure, mere procedural breach. And therefore, the order is completely without jurisdiction. He may get things done after considering my reply, but he cannot pass 148AD without considering it. That is my limited subject, uh, submission before my lords today. Under section 148 AB of the Income Tax Act. It's also the order under section 148 AD of the IT Act seeking to challenge the reopening for the suspend here. Seventeen eighty. It is seventeen eighty. No, it's sixteen. Sixteen seventy. Being an act which is rehearsed the provision of the law with the following prayers, better. Seven. Paragraph, we have heard the learned advocate, Mr. Aditya Askoka, assisted by learned advocate, Mr. Paumik Kalaria. You can just write down the prayers also here, which is at para 7. The essential first on the part of the learned advocate is that Petitioner had already filed a reply to the notice which was uh, issued earlier. What was the date of notice, earlier notice? Hello. This is, uh, this is 36, 2021. 30th June 21? Yes. On 30th June 21. was alleged that the petitioners purchased their mobile property for a huge consideration and the SSC is a shell company which is not involved in any kind of genuine business run activities. Paragraph. The grievance on the petitioner is that he had already replied to the notice earlier. However, in post- uh, Ashish Agrawal, the Union of India versus Ashish Agrawal, 
444 ITR page 1 he was served with the notice under section 148AB where respondent number 1 had not made any allegation nor there was any information supplied along with the notice. His reply filed earlier was not taken into consideration, which according to him is contrary to the provision of law. On account of uh, uploading of the informations in relation to the petitioner and without intimating him through the email is the reason for his non-response to the notice under section 148.18 pursuant to the directions of the Apex Court in case of Ashish Shatravai. Sukla. pointed out to us that the order disposing of the objections clearly make a mention of there being an absence of reply of the petition. Notice. My leadership. Uh, my leadership, the assessing officer has told me that if I do not reply now, he will proceed under 144 and do budget judgment assessment for this. We have on 9th intimated him that this petition has been filed. I'm requesting my lords to grant me some interim protection of any sort so that I do not have to, otherwise this writ petition may become infructuous by next date. My lords too. Well, the assessment proceedings, they have this thing, but I say that they have the entire reassessment itself is wrong. And leadership, I can cooperate with it, but, but the point is the very basis are struck out with respect to what I'm saying. Milods. Milods. Malad, but at least until then, Malad, because if he passes a 144 order, Malad, I'm in, I'm not trying to delay these proceedings at all. I believe that at some point of time, this will be assessed. I'm just saying that the due process needs to be followed. This is Rao. This is Rao. 
I'm a blessed man. I will grant. It's all there. So in the thirty five, Mr. Dinal Shah. My Lord, sir, before I go to the issue, uh, may I take two minutes to brief the background of the controversy in the law? This is assessment year 1819, so it has nothing to do with Ashish Agrawal. A petitioner invested into a venture capital fund called Business Excellence Trust floated by Motila Loswal way back in 2007 and 8. As per law, the venture capital fund income is exempt under section 1023FB. And then section 115 capital U provides that the income of the investor will be taxable in the like manner, in the same manner, as would have been taxable in the hands of the trust. The assessment of the trust was undertaken by the tax department. And there is a allegation that the exemption under section 1023 B may not be eligible to a trust. And therefore, the capital gain which has been distributed by trust to me and which is claimed exempt under section 1038 is proposed to be treated as escapement of income. So if my lords can go to 1023 B, uh, section 1023 FB, It's on page 1.138. Any income of a venture capital company or a venture capital fund from an investment in a venture capital undertaking. Any income of a venture capital company or a venture capital fund from the investment in a venture capital undertaking. I'm not reading the definitions. If my lords can now go to section 115U. Under fifteen capital U, uh, page 1.846. One point eight four six. Yes, just you. Chapter 12F, special provision relating to tax on income received from venture capital companies or venture capital funds. 
Notwithstanding anything contained in any of the provisions of this Act, any income accruing or arising ought to be received by a person out of the investment made in a venture capital company or a venture capital fund shall be chargeable to income tax in the same manner as if it were the income accruing, arising or received by such person had he made an investment directly into venture capital undertaking. I'll read subsection 2, which is also relevant. The person responsible for crediting or making payment of the income on the behalf of the venture capital company or venture capital fund and the venture capital company or a venture capital fund shall furnish within such time as may be prescribed to the person who is liable to tax in respect of such income and in the prescribed income tax authority, a statement in the prescribed form and verified in the prescribed manner, giving details of nature of income paid or credited during the previous year and such other relevant details as may be prescribed. In other words, I as an investor invest into a venture capital fund. They in turn makes investment into securities. When they sell, the amount is received by the trust. If it is a capital gain, short term or a long term, if it is a dividend income or a business income, I will be taxed in the like manner under section 115U. And by subsection 2, a form under rule 12C, rule 40, I'm sorry, form 40 is furnished to me saying that this is the income which you have earned, whether it is taxable, not taxable or an exempt. This is what the scheme of the act is. Now the allegation under the order is that assessment of the venture capital fund, the department feels that they are not entitled for exemption under section 1023 FB. And therefore, the amount of capital gain which is exempt in my hands is proposed to be taxed as escapement of income. My only two little submission, one, the capital gain is exempt because what the law says 115U, as if I would have made the investment, I have already paid STT and therefore income is exempt under section 1038 and therefore there is no escapement of an income. Alternatively, hypothetically department is right to say that the trust is not entitled for 1023 FB exemption. Then also the income would be taxed in the ends of the fund. The subsequent distribution again cannot be taxed in my hand. The same income can be taxed twice because the fund which is claiming exemption under section 10, if that exemption is withdrawn, the trust would pay the tax at the appropriate rate. I can be further tax on that distribution. So in either of the alternative, there is no question of escapement in my hands. Now my lots can go to D order, which is on page 15. Page 15. Uh, I, I'll skip para 1 and 2, which is general, page 16. In this connection, it is stated that his office is in possession of an information from a credible source that the SS has entered into a high value transaction during the financial year 1718 relevant to assessment in 1819. The narration of the transaction is under, as per the information available on record during the proceedings of scrutiny assessment under 143.3 in the case of Business Excellent Trust for EY 1819 relevant to 1718 financial year. It appears that, again, there is no surety that Business Excellent Trust has made a claim of exemption under section 1023 FB amounting to 247 crore, which is disallowed and LTCG claim by respect to beneficial investors as exempted would not be allowed at the time of completion of the assessment order. Any income accruing or arising or received by a person out of investment made in the venture capital fund shall be chargeable to income tax in the same manner as if it were the income accruing or arising or received by such person had he made investment directly in the venture capital undertaking section 115 capital O, U. On perusal of the data, it is noticed that during the financial year 1718, the SAC so and so has made an investment aggregating to 2 crore 67 lakhs. In, now, just to correct the facts, this is not an investment, it is a sale proceeds. 
the investment is made in September 2007 and in 2008. I'll, I'll show the details. Two crore 67 lakhs is the sale proceeds. It's not an investment made in the year, which I have claimed exempt under 1038. Considering the above fact, the following the provisions of 148 a inserted and amended in Finance Act 21 and also published in the Gazette and so and so, and looking to the principles of natural justice, notice under 148B was issued to the SS on 12th March 22, which was duly set up on the SSC through ITBA portal. The said notice was issued to the SSC after obtaining necessary approval from the competent authority. In this notice, the SSC was requested to submit details, explanation, clarification, along with supporting document evidence related to the issue, as discussed in the preceding para, or on before the date mentioned in the notice through email to ascertain the genuineness of the transaction. After the notice issued under 148B, the compliance, the SSC has submitted a reply date on 23rd March 22, along with some documentary evidence showing that there is no escapement of income. The reply of the SSC was duly considered, but not found acceptable. In view of the above facts, and it is amply clear that SSC as a beneficiary of transactions are narrower above, narrator above, and income to the extent of 2 crore 67 lakhs escape assessment within the meaning of section 147. It is important to mention that in this case, SAC has filed a return of income for the year under consideration, but no assessment was made in the return of income was processed under 143.1. In view of the above, provisions of clause B of explanation 2 to section 147 is applicable to the facts and the assessment under consideration is deemed to be a case where income chargeable to tax as assessment. If further notice that since the case was not selected for regular scrutiny, no further inquiries were conducted, nor any queries were raised in the above mentioned issue, and the issue as discussed above was still unattended, unverified, and never discussed by the AO for stated reasons. It is not a case of change of opinion by the AO. Now, if my lords can come to page 20, which is my statement of income, the relevant page is... Anyway, you have... Uh... According to you, they failed to address the objections, right? As you had advanced. These are the, all objections that you had advanced. And the same. Failed, it's, that is one of your preliminary uh, objection. That respondent was needed to actually address the reply which has been filed by the petition. Just not been. And after he, he, has, he has considered, but he did not add a speaking order. He just made a general observation that not found acceptable, but he did not deliberate in detail. That is one area, which is what is other area? The main is there is no escapement of income. Mm. There is no escapement at all. And I'll just take two minutes. Mm. The If my lords can come to page 27. Are we to go into the merit part? No, I'm not going to merit. I'm only limited point is that even if I appreciate the department allegation against the trust, that trust is not entitled for exemption under FB, what will what is the consequence? Section 161 to 164 relating to trust will trigger. The trust will pay tax at a maximum marginal rate. The distribution is never taxable. Correct. But then all these aspects are arguable before the authority concern. So in, in response to the 148 notice, can you not do that? I have already done. Correct. But then that is why he passed an order. But then again, this is a notice under section 148. You are asked to reply to the same also. No, I have already replied 148 AB notice. AB notice you replied. He has again issued the 148, started the reassessment proceedings. Not that during the course of the proceedings, you will not be in a position to respond. No, I, I completely agree. I will be able to furnish my arguments. Correct. My only limited submissions to your lordship is, if there is no escapement, where is the section, application of section 147? In my case, there is no allegation that, uh, just, just take two minutes if my lords can go to page 52. Yes. This is a letter received from me by Motila Oswal in relation to this summary of exempted income financial year 1718. So and so, 2 crore 67 lakhs on the right hand side table. Mm -hmm. Next page, note one. 
the net long term capital gain on which stt is paid above is exempt under section after the table there is note 1 correct above is exempt under section 1038 of the income tax act next page page 54 yes details of investment sold the long term shareholding instrument equity shares date of purchase financial year 8 9 9 10 and then on the above table, there is a working. The sale proceeds are 2 crore 92 lakhs minus cost of acquisition minus expenditure. The net gain is 2 crore 67 lakhs. And then as per law, under section 115 capital U2, the trust has issued me form number 40, which is on page 56. On page 56, they have issued me form number 64, prescribed under rule 12C. This one page is referred in form number 40. I, it is my mistake not to attach this annexure. On page 57, on page 57, uh, serial number 17. Details of person referred to in subsection 1 of section 115U by whom income is received or deemed to be received. This is the annexure which I just placed on record, which I forgot to attach. If I go to that annexure, so and so, the income of under long term capital gain is 2 crore 67 lakhs, which is exempt in my hands. I am already claiming exemption. There is no allegation about so called accommodation entry or so and so. It's a legal issue that if a trust has received an income, I should have paid the tax, but I'm claiming exemption under section 1038 for the relevant year because it has already been suffered security transaction tax. Hypothetically, the trust does not, is not entitled for an exemption. It is a trust who will pay the tax. Where is the question of tax in my hands? So there is no escapement of income at all. I'm not going into any other technical issue. In fact, the board, which is on page 59 and 60 okay. in a different context, had issued a circular. This was in relation to whether the trust is taxable or the trustee is taxable. You are a trustee to this trust? No, I'm, a, I'm an individual investor. I am not a trustee. I'm not a trustee. I'm a pure investor. On page 59 and 16, the board itself has clarified that once income is already taxed in one hand, it can't be taxed again in the hands of the beneficiary. So hypothetically, FB is not applicable to a trust. If I go by that presumption, there is no question of taxing in my hands. So there is no escapement. Got your point. Um, we would uh, still like an assistance from Mr. Sagan. Uh, get a copy. And ask Mr. Rahul to assist. You see, he will be doing it. This is uh, Ahmedabad. Ahmedabad would be with. Uh, this is by probably Mr. Patel. He does make a point by saying that this is something you know where it will be the. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Patel, Mr. Patel, I'm intimate Mr. Patel. Oblige. Serial number 40. I'm Mr. Hiren. Please, my lords. Assessment year concerned is my lord assessment year 15, 16, my lord. Three principal submissions that this, the allegations upon me is that there are some accommodation entries that which I have received, my lord. The first submission on this behalf is my lord, may kindly see the reasons prior to Ashish Agrawal, my lord, which has been shared to me. Lord, she may kindly see page 38. Please, my lord, I am saying there is duplication, maneuvering it uh, so that it may reach 
in excess of 50 lakhs followed. They say, in the year I have received loan, I have repaid loan. So they have counted both of them to come to a conclusion so that it exceeds 50 lakhs and hence the larger period of limitation would be available with them. Even otherwise, my lord, in assessment year 15, 16 also, my lord, the principal argue that uh, argument that it is barred by limitation. I'm taking that argument, my lord. Lord, you may kindly see. Please. Please, my lords. I have, please, my lord, I have specifically raised this contention, my lord, may kindly see page 66. Please, my lord, 50. It starts from page. And the onus is on the revenue to prove the income really belongs to this. My Lord, there was one more extra contention which I have taken. My Lord, they rely upon one statement mm. in the information which they have shared with me. My first reply was to, uh, filed on 17 June. My Lord, my kindly see page 58 at the bottom. My Lord, I request that kindly provide those statements because it was the mandate by the order of Honorable Apex Court that not only information, the material with the revenues relying upon should be shared with me. They have not done. They have not done it. My Lord, my kindly see page 66, my Lord, that makes an interesting read. Hmm. Page 66, my Lord. Six, have, 66 is... Uh, is the part of my objections I have taken, no, my Lord. No, it's not. This is the... It's a part of your objections. 66 is not. Your objection... My Lord, find the that, table in that, my Lord, on page 66, the 66 table. 66 is a... No. My Lord, have... Two, four, we have uh, with us two four two seven. I'm so sorry, Malot. I'm so. Here, my lord, the allegations are of my lord's uh, fifteen sixteen. The allegations are of um, my lord that I have uh, traded in penny stock, my lord. So here, I would be adapting the argument, principal argument that nothing in the form of asset, my lord, have been disclosed in the order. Because my lord, they say that there is undisclosed income has to be represented in the form of an asset, my lord. There's no finding, my lord. And particularly in light of the fact when I have made the submission that the purchase was made by me through a check, my lord. Had it been a case that they are alleging that my source of purchase is not very clear, then I could have understand that they have, uh, they have got the case that I have bought it through cash. My lord, my kindly see, my lord, my uh, objections, we start from page 54, my lord. I have also reproduced the check with them. All right. Special civil application 2427-23. Petition seeks to challenge the notice dated 27th May 2022. In this petition under Article 226. Pursuant to the order passed in case of Ashish Agrawal versus Union of India versus Ashish 444 ITR page 1. <clears throat> as well as the order dated 31st July 22 under section 148 AD, seeking to reopen the assessment for the assessment year 2015-16 in the following prayers, para 17, word the learned advocate. Sridhi, who has uh, urged that was, was strenuously urged before this court that in response to the notice, uh, the detailed reply had been filed by the present petitioner, where the emphasis has been that it is not a case where the alleged escaped assessment is represented in the form of any asset as defined under the provision of section 149. Nor is there the case of the assessing officer that he's in possession of any account or other documents or evidence. Which reveals that the income chargeable to the tax in excess of 50 lakhs represented in the form of asset as escaped assessment. Notice he, he has also raised the issue of the limitation. Notice.
प्लीज माय लॉर्ड इनफैक्ट माय लॉर्ड आई आई हैव मेड माय सब्सटेंटिव आर्गुमेंट अगेंस्ट द एडिशन आल्सो इन माय ऑब्जेक्शन आल्सो फॉर ऑन माय पार्ट देयर इज नथिंग मोर व्हिच आई आई कैन शेयर बट स्टिल इफ दे रिक्वायर एनीथिंग एल्स माय लॉर्ड आई वुड बी कोऑपरेटिंग विद थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च में फोर्टी वन स्थिर त्रिवेदी असेसमेंट इयर इज फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन मैलोट्स डॉक्टर में कैंडली सी द रीजन ऑन पेज थर्टी एट प्री आशीष अग्रवाल विच वेयर शेयर विथ मी पेज थर्टी एट मैलोट्स paragraph 3 my lord at the bottom as per the information available with the department and disclosed by the entry provider so and so the ssa has obtained accommodation entry in the form of bogus unsecured loan to the extent there are 133 saving bank accounts of indian bank partners. only four uh, three pertains to me my lord they are saying all the cash deposits were in adajan branch that is the that... allegation against one uh, amit jay shah who was the um, entry provider alleged entry provider my lord on the who basis of whose statement this uh, reassessment has been opened my lord they said that i have received loan from all the uh, individuals name at the bottom of the page 38 and over the page on page 39 my lords mm. now my lords may mm-hmm. kindly see it follows that it uh, on page 39 it is also men- mentioned here in that the ssc has obtained accommodation entry in the form of bogus repayment of unsecured loan to the extent i have repaid the loan my lord during the same year the loan was taken in check repaid in check my lord they have considered both the entries so that it it is in excess of 50 lakhs and they can invoke larger period of limitation my lord this is my first objection my lord is it permissible my lord secondly my lords lord chief may kindly see once a fresh notice was issued my lord mckinley see page 58 page 58 hmm. yes at the bottom paragraph 2 my lord i have specifically requested for the statement which has been given by that alleged entry provider sri amit shah my lord Further, the SSC humbly submits, uh, humbly request your honours to kindly provide copies of material statement of Hamid Jaisha and other person who has stated we had given cash and they had provided loan to us. Malers, they have not given malers. Thereafter, malers on page sixty-six. the table my lord i have reproduced that i have only taken loan from these three individuals and i have repaid them during the course of the year so either the loan taken my lord my respectful submission that if i have taken loan it is not represented in the form of asset because that would be on the liability and liability side of my balance sheet secondly my lord even considering without prejudice that it is asset my lord i have taken loan and repaid they have counted both of them if only loan is taken my lord the amount of alleged escapement as per their best version would also be 40 lakhs but as per me it is 30 lakhs so all through banking channel that you have operated please my lord i have also lordship may kindly see and uh, this were all forming the part of uh, your reply please my lord in fact and this was also sub- produced during the course of original assessment also Subs- all right substantiated with all documents please my lords special ca of 248 of 2020 by of the present petition on article 226 petition seeks to challenge the notice dated 25th may 2022 issued under section
29 July 22, huh? issued uh, under section 148 and the order passed under section 148 AD, seeking to reopen the assessment for the year 2015-16 on the ground that. This is uh, incomplete violation of the principle of, of law and the statutory provisions. Their sort code are as follows. There are 18. You heard the learned advocate, Srinayan Trivedi, who strenuously urged that uh, the very basis of uh, initiating the very basis for reopening is very important. The petitioner is alleged to have the loan from three, four persons, where in fact it is from three persons. You can you can just remove that. It says that, and, and it is further. You see that the alleged escapement of income is represented, is, is not represented in the form of any asset as defined under the provision of Section 149. According to him, the revelation of the loan and its repayment through the banking channel is forming a part of his original return. The loan taken from some of those parties had been repaid in the very year. That possibly with the reason why they had suspected you are paying back. Through the banking channel, my lord, in my respectful submission, if it is pay, uh, repaid, uh, unless there is a finding of cash, my lord, there is no element of undisclosed income to represent in the form of asset, my lord. We're keeping it on 13th March, written number. No final order, my lords. I am cooperating, my lord, in all that. I'm immensely grateful. <clears throat> yes, Bhutan. 42, so Sudhir Mehta. 14. So 14, 15. Uh, notice uh, 148 is 29th focused. Originally is 30th June 2021. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, the notice issued is uh, twenty-nine August 22 and 149 AD order. In our slot. Forty-three, Sudhir Mehta, thirteen, thirteen, forty. What is the date of notice? One forty-eight. Original notice is seven six two thousand twenty-one. Then in post, uh, Ashish Agrawal, one forty-eight AD is twentieth July twenty-two. The notice one forty-eight is also the self self same date. Forty four Sudhir Mehta. Forty. So notice uh, earlier notice is twentieth April twenty one one forty eight eighty. While uh, disposing of the objections is twenty ninth August twenty two. The very day is of one forty eight notice. Forty-five Sudhir Mehta, thirteen forty. Thirteen. So assessment here is thirteen fourteen, which is sought to be reopened. The notice uh, earlier notice of one forty-eight is seventh June twenty-one in post Ashish Agrawal. The notice is of twenty-fifth May two thousand twenty-two, and one forty-eight AD order is twenty-ninth August twenty-two. It is. The notice under section 148 is also of the same date. Okay, Nara. 
46, uh, Ms. Komal Khatri. Please, my lord. To this matter, challenging the notice issued under the Land Grabbing Act, provision of the Land Grabbing Act. Uh, here, my lord. So, land, land Grabbing. Please, my lord. So, under the land, land Grabbing. Land Grabbing. <laughs> yes. Uh, here, petitioner is a tenant of the subject land. Uh, 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 he is having the possession of the subject land for the last 50 years mm -hmm. and uh, he got the successor rights from this uh, subject land. Uh, my lord, uh, civil proceedings are already pending between the parties, whereby the status quo was granted between the parties. Uh, the status quo order was granted in 2018, and petitioner has are already having the position. Same has been recorded in the uh, order, which was uh, which was passed. You're challenging by the, the virus of uh, land Please, cabinet. my lord. This is the and along practice. the line of other petitions which are Please, pending before this court, you're Please. seeking some relief. Who's happening for the state? What do you have to say? Yeah. We are aware of uh, the earlier uh, you know, traditions which... Uh, yes, so, but uh, as far as those provisions are concerned, hmm. it's already challenging a number of petitions and here they have also... The regular civil suit is pending between yes. the parties. Uh, is the state a party there? I'll have to get it verified as far as those proceedings are concerned. Is that, uh, the RCS is 17 of 2017. Is the state a party? Is the state party in that? Uh, so page 60 would throw some light on it. Mm. If it essentially seems that state is on it, because it is between the two of the private place. parties. Notice is at uh, page number 17. Which is we are situated at where? Which place is it? Uh, Poor Bandar. Poor Bandar. Please, my lord. Similar to the previous matters, my lord. Can we have an interim order from 2995 of 2021? There's some interim order passed by the court is, in that matter. It is, annexed, it is annexed here in the petition, my lord. Page? It is at page 77. 77. Please, my lord. Hmm. Four, three, and five C of the Gujarat land grabbing prohibition rules. So against you all, uh, FIR have been uh, issued? Uh, FIR is issued? FIR is not issued, but there is a chances of issuing the FIR, my lord. There and can't here, be a stay Madam, against for filing an FIR. As per the provision of the Land Grabbing Act, my lord, it is a, it, it can be initiated against the land grabber. But here in the case of petitioner, he doesn't fall within the definition of land grabber. As per, as per the section 2D, mm -hmm. uh, land grabber, which uh, which says the person who illegally occupying this, uh, any of the land. But here it is the case that petitioner is already having the position. That which, you see it for the past 50 years. All right. The same. There was an interim injunction that you had sought from the court. The suit uh, which is pending suit, of the year 2017. Yeah, 2017. That is uh, your suit or uh, the other side? It is, is the other side. Private respondent suit. So there you had sought some interim relief. What has happened? What has the court done then? Court has considered that the uh, subject land is owned by the uh, private respondent number four, which is any, uh, which which is here private respondent number four. So it is the plaintiff who is the owner. Yes, it, it but was. You are, the, it you was, are in possession of the place. Yes, uh, that order is uh, trial court order is page 69. six. Yes, please, my lord. 
અંશ મંજૂર કરવામાં આવે છે અને સ્ટેટસ કો દવા વાળી સ્થિતિ યથાવત પરિસ્થિતિ જાળવી રાખવી દેટ વોટ ધ કોર્ટ હેઝ સેટ પ્લીઝ માય લોર્ડ એન્ડ રાઈટ વેર ઇઝ વેર ઇઝ ધ કોર્ટ હેઝ સેટ અબાઉટ સિન્સ લોંગ યુ હેવ પોઝેશન યુ આર ઇન પોઝેશન એટ ધી અબોવ પેરેગ્રાફ ધ પેજ સ્પીચ 69 માય લોર્ડ હિયર ઓન અબાઉટ ધેટ પેરેગ્રાફ ઇટ હેઝ બીન રેકોર્ડેડ બાય ધી લોવર લર્નેડ લોવર કોર્ટ ધા વાળી મિલકતમાં પ્રતિવાદીનો કબજો ભોગતો હતો આવેલાનો પણ ક્યાંથી ક્યારથી you saying 50 years kyarthi court is not also uh, making a mention since when even the even and your documents which you produced before the court Please. are also how old they are oh uh, my lord here also i have produced it electricity bills which uh, declares that the electricity bills are paid by the present petitioner right, since when sorry my since lord. when you paid the electricity bills since when 2000 uh, the it is old record therefore i only uh, can gather the uh, record for court in some uh, matters where of course the it was the corporation land has already said that you know just merely paying even the taxes the state and paying yes. the electricity bills also you having the electricity line may not Uh, make it uh, necessary for the court But to consider I, I, if there is a land here of course it's a private land you before the court will definitely we are supposed But to be yes, bearing in mind that that you've been protected and the status quo has been granted by the But the status quo has granted between the parties we have followed the order of the learned mm-hmm. lower court we have uh, never constructed or ever uh, renovated the subject land as per the order of the learned lower court here my lord after the status quo of 2 years the uh, respondent number for complaint and has preferred this complaint and even otherwise uh, section 2d clearly states that uh, land grabber or uh, the uh, definition of land grabber who illegally occupy the land and here in the case of petitioner uh, it is not illegal that, that is the very contention that i am trying to raise before the honorable court all these petitions at some point of time are premature in the nature for the reason if you go to the definition all the other provisions which are under challenge are to be read in harmony with the definition therefore any action of the authority which is beyond the definition where the land grabbing aspect is not established and any arrest is effected only in those questions these ultra virus question with reference can arise today at this point of time what is under challenge the reason the apprehension is page 70 i am not on the point of ultra virus as of now page 70 is the apprehension mm-hmm. which is simply a notice therefore at the stage of notice they can always participate all those documents which are now placed before the honorable court can be placed for the authorities uh, let's look at where is the notice page 70 hmm ati tamne notice jaan karvama aave chhe ke faryadi apun swayamsho e dwara porbandh kalpana khana basa jamin so milka dwara kabjo kari vidhel hoy temach kabjo khali karta na hoy faryad land grabbing act is be stated karel chhe jeni tapas sandarbh se collector kachari porbandh patra amne sope chhe jena sandarbh janvan ke upo faryad ange aakshep tatha faryadi nivedan levama hoy तो <laughs> but that conflict has to be read with the honorable court may have paid 27 just to assist the honorable court on the larger part of the controversy because there will be n number of petitions to be coming this honorable court may have d and e it is undisputed that till d and e is not satisfied the act is not going to operate which page are you saying page 27 of the very petition it is a part of the definition clause if the honorable court may have d and e i'll read land grabber means a person who commits land grabbing and includes any person who gives financial aid to any person for taking illegal possession of the lands or for construction of unauthorized structures thereof or who collects or attempts to collect from any occupier of such land grant compensation or other charges by criminal intimidation or who evades or doing of any of the over mentioned acts and also includes the successor in interest land grabbing means every activity of land grabber to occupy or attempt to occupy with or without any use of force threat intimidation deceit any land whether belonging to the government public sector undertaking a local authority or religious or charitable institution or any other private person or which you or they have no ownership title or physical possession without any lawful entitlement 
and with a view to illegally taking possession of such land or creating illegal tenancies or lease or license agreements or transfers or sale or by construction or to unauthorized structures thereon for sale or hire or use of occupation of such unauthorized structures and the term of grabbed land shall be construed accordingly. Now, this definition and E has a lot of significance. It is very strict. Anybody who establishes that this definition, the requirements are not established, we are bound to drop the proceedings. Therefore, in those cases, the challenge to ultraviolet does not come into picture. It only come into picture in those cases which otherwise are falling in this criteria or the actions are established. What are the criminal actions that you take once you find that there is okay. some substance? Sir, those are the reference to matters, the provisions which are under challenge. You know, I may take the honorable court to those provisions. The reason I was not taking because essentially that test would also come into picture where these qualifications they are able to establish are not. Are let's not let's look at the no, provisions. The challenge is the honorable court may have section seven for the timing. I'll take the honorable court to. That is on page 29. Uh, the state government may with concurrence yes. of uh, section seven. The state government may with the concurrence of the chief justice of the high court of Gujarat and the chief official that is considered one or more special court for such areas of areas or for such cases or class of group of cases as may be specified in the notification where any portion arises as to the jurisdiction of the special court, it shall be referred to the state government whose decision in the matter shall be final. This is one of the challenges, subsection 2. Uh, thereafter, I may take the honorable court to the other provisions which are under challenge, that is a section 9 on the very same page. The special court either may either swarm order or on application made by the any person or any officer authorized to the district collector take cognizance of or try every case arising out of any alleged act of land grabbing or with respect to ownership and title to or uh, lawful possession of land grabbers whether before or any commencement of this act and pass in such orders including orders of by way of interim directions as it deems fit notwithstanding anything in the code of civil procedure 1908 and any case in respect of an alleged act of land grabbing or determination of the question of title and ownership or to or lawful possession of the any of the land grab under this act shall be subject to the provisions of this act be triable in the special court and decision of the special court shall be final. So okay. it is a, it is a cognizance which needs to be taken by yes. the special court, right? Yes. Either it can take sumo to yes. or an application or by any person or any officer authorized by district collector. Please. So, and try every case arising out of an alleged act of land grabbing or with respect to the ownership and title. Yes, Fine. So, this appears to be at nine. Yes. It is, it is a section nine. Section nine. Yes. Before that, what you're doing is an inquiring into this matter. Yes. You, by exercise of which power have you given the notice? Yes. Mr. Sharma, how many uh, uh, these matters are already stated? No, what we are saying is that you're right, that it is ultimately the officer concerned who always will need to take a call. Yes. And this very aspect, they can always go and point out to the officer concern. Now, if the apprehension in their mind is about uh, some criminal actions, which the special court either can sumo to take cognizance of or by somebody else, 
we can uh, see as to in what manner but then this will amount to stalling everything fact, that is what the, the because here he, she's right that there is already a suit pending between the parties where the court has directed the status quo order to be maintained we do not know as to why the suit is not proceedings but this aspect when placed before the collector who has issued the yes. notice he can always take note yes. of that and as an officer of the court i may indicate one aspect that while reading those definition d and e if at any point of time this honorable court or any of the honorable court comes to the conclusion that the actions were not in sync and not in consonant with these provisions in fact heavy actions can be taken against the officer concerned but without satisfying d and e the other provisions simply sitter being challenged would not make uh, uh, the actions in contravention to those provisions once d and e is satisfied it is a deemed presumption that the it is established that there is a land grabbing act and therefore those other provisions which are under challenge those would be in sync therefore declaration of with reference to ultra vires is not the solution at this definition that this clear definition of land grabbing act will not be there could you do one thing we can keep the matter tomorrow and you can also take instructions from the officer concerned as to why has he initiated this action and what is this just ask ask him what otherwise ordinarily when the matter was not coming and being challenged before this court what ordinarily the course of actions the collectors are taking you can also know from it this is for us because if the there are we given to will will call for from the registry as to what are the total number of the matters but then staying them may not serve the purpose if, they shall have to be some pain versus some more time so that what i'll do is i'll also call upon the department that which are the matters which are stuck at what stage which are the matters which we'll also fairly say that would be covered that is that is about those matters we'll call and for it the next one this is you can you can just get the detail friends my lord uh, can i make one more submission Uh, if my uh, my learned friend is uh, contending that it is only at the stage of notice and nothing uh, action has been initiated against the petitioner under the provision of the when land. when are you asked to go and reply to this notice? When are you asked to go and reply to this notice? Uh, my lord, uh, I want to produce this order where the it was only at the stage of notice where the uh, this honorable previous honorable court was pleased to issue the. notice and uh, grant the stay my lord we I are aware was, we are, like we are fully stay. aware of everything please and since me. there's a every in every matter you challenging the virus so therefore the court had said some brief order at the time of his lordship justice uh, uh, vikramnath uh, and uh, uh, the division bench please when his lordship then was and we are aware of it so uh, and at that stage it, my lord justice vikramnath has uh, in uh, a division is, bench has said we are since there's a there is a challenge to the virus right now court has said don't uh, proceed further please, and then the subsequently the other benches have followed that please my lord just want to merely granting stay will not serve the purpose and if your apprehension is of some actions against the persons uh, in a criminal manner or the special court taking a sumo to cognizance of the same and resulting into the sections we'll see about it He's just wanting to know as to what he is, uh, what are the instructions Please. of as to how they want to proceed Please. tomorrow at the top. Please. Please. We have requested learned uh, AGP, Mr. Sharma, to uh, take instructions from the authority concerned, as he is present after being served the advance copy in this matter. being we are conscious the registry in the meantime shall give us the details of the total number of the matters pending concerning this very issue yes tomorrow okay you can also take uh, as brother justice part is suggesting the matter on the merit also can be the instructions can be taken whether at any point of time they have pointed out to you about the pendency and the entry order which has been passed by yes. the court concern yes yes 47 miss sandhya matani identical matter your lordships it is at the notice stage under the provisions of land grabbing where is virus in, in under challenge your lordships so identical it is at notice stage but we'll recently you've been given a copy 
I have received the copy, but one aspect, at least in the previous matter, there was some prima facie contentions which were raised. As far as the present uh, petition is concerned, there are no other documents placed. Lordship, even prima facie establishing that the action is not in nature of land grab. Therefore, it would be better. Of course, I also try to gather instructions in this matter. So any 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 um, litigation is uh, going on between Lordship, any, uh, here, or this is a here, land of here. We had applied for regularization because I have been possession since last fifty seven years. But my re uh, regularization is rejected, Your Lordship. Right now, I am again further the process of when, uh, getting this regularization. Lordship, either so I. So, where is. Just a moment. I have not where... produced that document because I have filed this in urgency. I need for translation before the, as the predecessor when a, when a bench requires translation. I would supply that. Either Your Lordship may grant when a week's time, I would have produced that document also. All right. You can uh, uh, let, let this be because. Uh... The Mamladar Kutiana has written in January 23, and uh, this is addressed to you. This is for vacating that uh, land. Second present. time I have been also. But then, if if your request for uh, regularization has been rejected, should it not have been a part of this uh, also? Forget about uh, the translated copies, but have you made a mention? In, is is that an everment in your petition? We had applied. I have mentioned, stated in the petition. Where is that? that please, please show I it. stated in the, my para that we have applied for regularization, but that is cancelled. That is not granted. No, no. Please point out. I would uh, produce that document also, uh, just a minute, Lordships. Part of the portion has already been in a petition is dispersed from the part of the portion also. Lordship may see page number three. Mm -hmm. Middle of that para, uh, no, para is your Lordship may see. Ladyship may see. Then petitioner has also applied for regularization of the say disputed wasteland to the district collector office for Bandar on 11 5 2000. Local Nagar Palika and deputy collector recommended that subject land be sold to the petitioner at market price. However, the said application was rejected by the Porbandar collector. Petitioner has constructed compound balls surrounding this disputed land and planted fruit trees and coconut trees in this land and also have constructed Goshala in this land before eight years. So I had applied. I can produce that document on record. But so it was rejected on which date you see it? I have mentioned here, no date I mentioned, but I applied on 11 5 2000. 11 5 2000. I had applied. And then it was rejected on which date you had not mentioned. Uh, what did you do thereafter? I'm right now also I'm seeking that this may be regularized. I'm ready to. No, no, that is a, another thing. Portion if, of the land has the... already been uh, I'm, uh, evicted from the portion of the land. It is already. This land belongs to the state. This uh, actually I have possessed from my original owner, and mm. during that time, with that, and uh, it has been uh, in possession of the original owner, and this I have purchased fifty-seven the, years. My father has purchased. Besides the point, you had made a request for regularization. Yes, it has not been allowed. Yes, if it is in the year two thousand that you had made a request. Yes, and if it had not been allowed, in that eventuality, what did you do? Had you taken any step? Have you approached the court? Have you said that this has been denied to me illegally by the authority concerned? If you do not do anything and expect that you, whatever is your uh, status under the law, will be continued to be protected, is that what is expected? Would take the instruction of what he has done further. And if he is ready to vacate the state in a area, then in that situation, I would make the. First fight. of all, you will produce before us that rejection order. Yes, Lord, ladyships. I would protest. And you will also tell us as to what steps you've taken thereafter. Lordship, I would file hmm. additional affidavits. Just because protest. in some matters the court has protected those persons. Yes. Then every matter shall have to be seen. Just because the virus is challenged, that doesn't mean that the court will give, you know, the blanket order of stay. Each matter shall need to be looked into. 2470 of 2023. The petition seeks to challenge the virus of the provision of the Gujarat Land Grabbing Act. And also questions the notice, which according to the petitioner has been issued after the delay of 30 years. On the land in question at survey number 558 at village Kutiana, district Porbandar. By the respond number three, which is 
allegedly for the harassment of the petitioner. Paragraph, we notice that petitioner averts that he is in possession of this land for the past 57 years and also had made a request. You can write down the survey number one, acre three, Guta 16. He had also made a request to the district collector Orbandar on 11th May 2000 for regularization of his possession with the recommendations of the deputy collector and the municipality. However, such a request has been rejected by Porbandar collector. The date and the document in that relation are not on record. We also notice that what steps have been taken thereafter by the petitioner also not emerging on the record. It will be essential for us to know these basic details before any further hearing can take place. Learned advocate, Ms. Natani, requires some time for this purpose. Let the matter be notified for this purpose on 21st. The May it be 23? 23, I would be out of station, so 22, 23. Okay, 22nd. In the meantime, we have requested the learned AGP also to gather the details from the district collector Porbandar in relation to this matter. Any documents, if the district collector possesses, he shall share with the court. Please.
these things in a very perfunctory manner. But I have given him some valid defense by saying that, no, no, I have been assessed my lord before the income tax officer Ahmedabad. And no notice under section 143 has been issued by that Ahmedabad officer. of 2023 26 of 2023 or 20 23 23 agreed by the order passed by the income tax appellate tribunal on 24 june 2022 and the bench it in idea number 2916 oblique ht oblique 2017 for the assessment year 13 14 and raise the following substantial portions of law. Para 4. We have heard the learned advocate, Mr. Shivraman, assisted by learned advocate, Mr. Vijay Patel, searched before this court that issue of jurisdiction raised before the CIT appeals was not entertained. And when further challenged before the ITAT, it had chosen not to even consider the same in the order impugned and simply remanded the matter to the very assessing officer whose jurisdiction was challenged. Notice for final disposal. Merry Christmas. 88 onwards, there is seek note of the... Yes, Mr. Ketan Shah. Can we, uh, this all tax appeals, right? right? It also can go on the same date, 6 March. Mr. Ketan Shah has filed a seek note. All tax appeals of his from 88 to 96 will go on 6 March. Are any matters now left out in the admission? No. no. Okay. You can just give us uh, nine, 190. That's a delay of uh, 20 days. Where we will not ask Mr. Sangani to even address us. 97 also you can give us. And this 97 who appears? Mr. Devetia, you appear in 97. Well, this is a CA for condonation. What is, the, what is the delay? Well, the delay days. for condonation and the, the delay is of 85 days. Well, the chart on page 3, the list of events is self explanatory. Mm -hmm. On page 3 of the application. 89 days. Uh, Yes, Mr. This is an you see a one in uh, one seven zero eight. Aggrieved uh, and dissatisfied by the order dated thirtieth May two thousand twenty two by Income Tax Appellate Tribunal, ITAT Ahmedabad Bench B in ITA number two forty nine. Public HD oblique two thousand nineteen for the assessment year fifteen sixteen. Goma, the appellant prefers this appeal under Section 260, Capital A of the Income Tax Act, 1961. I take it in after.
This is an application seeking condonation of delay in preferring this text appeal. The order impugned is uh, passed on 30th May 22, and the same was communicated to the applicant on 16 June 2022. There's a delay of 89 days in preferring the appeal. Since the applicant had filed the miscellaneous application on 27th September 22, being MA number 79 oblique HD oblique 2022 before the tribunal, which otherwise can be filed within six months of the end of the month in which the order under section 254 into bracket one is received. This rectification application was disposed of on 16-11-2022, which was communicated to the applicant on 14-12-2022. He filed an application seeking certified copy on 15-12-22, and an appellate tribunal provided him the copy on 23rd December 22. Paragraph. He's seeking to exclude in competition of period of delay. The period commencing from the date of filing of miscellaneous application to the date of communication of the order on miscellaneous application. Since the applicant was pursuing an alternative remedy, this was a genuine belief that that alternative remedy should be first exhausted before he actually prefers the appeal. Therefore, according to the applicant, there is no delay in referring the text appeal as the total period to be excluded is uh, 120 days. Where sort for is followed, para three. The rule to be made returnable forthwith. We have requested Mrs. Rawal, since sending counsel Mrs. Rawal is requested to appear with Mr. Kiran, Karan Sangani, who has argued, who, who has uh, waived the service of notice of rule. Watch. Paragraph. Planned advocate Mr. Devetia and Mr. Karan Sangani for on behalf of Mrs. Rawal has been heard. Noticing the genuine ground which has been given and the remedy which was being pursued by way of business application act would be to reproduce the chronological events. You can uh, type this out at uh, page three. Considering the fact that the delay which is sought to be condoned is of 89 days, whereas petitioner continued to pursue the remedy by preferring an MA before the tribunal. Hence, in essence, that does not appear to be any delay. However, technically, the delay being there, the reasons given being quite satisfactory, same as condoned. Rule is made absolute. <clears throat> Let the text appeal be numbered and placed for consideration. In seriatim. 190, Miss Vaibhavi Pari. This is Kalpana. Mm -hmm. Civil application 222 in text appeal 616 of 13. Rule learn at the Still standing counsel who will be appearing in this, this the same. You can say that uh, the applicant is, is, has moved this uh, application for seeking condonation of delay of 20 days to revive the text appeal, being text appeal 616 of 2013, by order dated 22nd March 21.
was disposed of with a liberty to revive the tax. If the applicant was not in a position to avail the benefit of scheme under the direct tax Vishwas Act 2020 to break a DTVSV Act, the period of limitation for filing MCA before the court under the provision of Section 5 of the Limitation Act is 30 days from the date of communication of the order. The MCA was to be filed on or before 20th April 2021. However, the same was filed. There appears to be some mistake. Who's appearing? Is Swarbhavi Parikh, where is she? And here is um, 20th April 2020. So it has to be scheme to be filed on 10th April. So not 10, the 30th April. The state is a mistake. You can just keep that blank. There is a delay of uh, 20 days in preferring the MC, hence this application. Seeking the condonation of that period. It appears that the period between the order passed in text appeal 616-2013 on 22nd March 21 till 28th February 2022 is sought to be excluded while completing the delay as per the order of the apex court in case of F reference RE, cognizance for extension of limitation in business application number 21, oblique 2022. In SMW bracket C number 3 of 20. The limitation period according to the applicant for filing a civil application was over and the application under DTVSV was preferred, therefore. This application. Marigna, the delay being of minuscule nature and non-deliberate. The appeal being that this since may hamper the preferring of the appeal. See, is condoned being satisfied with the reasons given. Um, here, the rule has already been issued by the court. Yes. That was on 3rd October 2006. You file your appearance, you not file your appearance. You will be filing today. You filing today? You can say that um, the rule had been issued by this court on 3rd October 22. And it has been uh, and the respondent thereafter has been represented by the learned senior standing council. Mrs. Okay. 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 The next appeal shall be revived and raised. The MC probably is not on board today. It's not on board. It's not on board. Only the civil application. Oh, so let then MCA in that case be raised because I think otherwise it's a court's order so that it is in routine, it should come MCA to be placed okay. for the consideration of the court. <laughs> Rule is made absolute accordingly. Yes. yes. Okay. 
this has not been given to them so this has been given their contention is once you are alleging this is a suspicious transaction you must mention the name of the parties with whom you have we have alleged we transacted that is not you might not have given the name here but otherwise have you supplied otherwise any material 140 ad order kindly see page 70 70 therabi they they have been named right in the second line in this regard it is relevant to mention that a search action was carried out on 31221 in the premises of mahindra shri mehta at surat the key person in the statement recorded during search had admitted the modus operandi of suppression of two zeros in the entries digital data found and corroborated revealed that mahindra shri c mehta had made such transactions with various parties by following similar modus operandi it is also established from the seized data that the ssc had made unexplained investment in the transactions with mahindra c mehta amounting to 31 lakhs thus the ssc has made unaccounted transactions of investment which were not found genuine on the basis of corroborated evidence admission of mahindra c so here it has been reflected but otherwise no the stage of 140 db this is not we appreciate the fairness it will be at the stage where you'll be supplying these details Special C one five four one three of two thousand twenty two. This court on eighth August two thousand twenty two had issued the notice. Quorum Justice uh, Anjaria, Justice Karia. Affidavit and reply is not as yet come. No. No, ma'am. All right. Then this has been duly served, and the appearance also has not come today. It's today so only that's yes. It has, it has been duly served in the month of uh, August. Paragraph: The brief facts leading to the present petition are as follows. This uh, petition under Article Two Twenty Six challenges the validity and legality of notice dated sixteen March Twenty Two issued by the Respondent Number One under Section One Forty Eight A B of the Income Tax Act Nineteen Sixty One, the IT Act here in after, for assessment year eighteen nineteen. <clears throat> Rejecting the objections of the petitioner on seventh April twenty two, passed by the respondent under section one forty eight A D, and all consequential proceedings. Paragraph: Petitioner is an individual engaged in the business of trading, who filed the return of income, EY eighteen nineteen under section one thirty nine one eight, 
declaring his total income on 24th August 20, uh, 2018 at rupees 2,79,008. Paragraph. The return of income of petitioner was persist under section 143.1 and an intimation under section 143.1 was issued accepting the return income. There was no scrutiny assessment in case of the petitioner. The paragraph of Shoko's notice was issued under section 148AB on 16 March 22, stating therein that he had information which suggests that the income chargeable to tax for AY 1819 has escaped assessment within the meaning of section 147 in case of petitioner. We stop. The petition was also required to show cause as to why the notice under section 148 should not be issued. In his case, on the basis of the information contained in an extra to the seed notice. Paragraph, it appears that the information was flagged on insight portal in accordance with the risk management strategy formulated by CBDT. that the petitioner had entered into suspicious transactions of rupees 31 lakhs, 12,000. The petitioner's grievance is that uh, it does not contain the details, such as the name of the parties with whom the transaction was entered, the amount involved, the date when transaction was entered into, the material in possession of the respondent leading to believe that transaction is suspicious in nature, which resulted into the escapement of the income. Paragraph. So whether the grievance on the part of the petitioner that in absence of any tangible material in possession of the respondent number one, the exit source of information available with the respondent number one and the nexus of the in, nexus of the respondent number one with sorry, nexus of the petitioner with the same. Could not have been established. Paragraph, therefore, the present petition with the following reliefs. Paragraph 54. We award the learned advocate, Mr. Chemin Dave, as by learned advocate, Mr. Shivam Parik, right? Shivam. And Lanet, uh, who will be uh, Mrs. Mrs. Rao? Lanet, Saint Standing Council, Mrs. Rao, with Mr. Karan Sangani. On having heard both the sides and also having considered the material on the record, it appears that a notice under Section 148AB of the Income Tax Act, dated 16 March 2022, was issued. After obtaining the approval of, approval of PCIT, Ambivar 3. Paragraph and extra to this notice is indicative that the information in case of the petitioner had been flagged on inside portal in accordance with risk management strategy formulated by CBDT.
on verification of the information and the documents available on the record, it has been observed that there is an escapement of income to the tune of 31 lakhs 12,000. And it was being represented in the form of assets. The basic criteria of income chargeable to tax represented in the form of asset and amount escaping the assessment being greater than 50 lakhs rupees as specified under section 1591b is said to have been satisfied paragraph. It is not out of place to make a mention of where is the 148 AD order? Which page? Starts at page 61. 61 to 7. The relevant portion, page 70. The order passed under clause D of section 148A of the IP Act. makes a specific mention while disposing of the objections of the petitioner. That the SSC has not submitted any reply or explanation or evidence. also refers to a search action carried out on 3rd December 2021 in the premise of a person at Surat who is named and is said to be a key person in the statement recorded during the search. would be to reproduce the entire pair. So it's a pair of B you can uh, reproduce from page 70. The reason why this has uh, the objections have been disposed of and not entertained is that the petition has not been in a position to furnish the proper explanation and justification to prove the genuineness of transactions. It is also alleged that the SSC had tried to drag the issue by way of filing legal citations without giving any explanations about the source of unexplained investment. Paragraph. This is in a clear violation of the requirement of the principle of natural justice also and also the statutory requirement under the law. The information which is to be furnished to the petitioner shall have to necessarily include the name of a person. If it can be mentioned in the order disposing of the objections categorically, there is no earthly reason as to why the same could not have been supplied to the Petitioner SSC. If the search action was the result of recording the statement and thereafter issuing the notice by establishing the by by not by but on on finding the nexus between these two, the list that could be done at the end of the officer is to 
furnish the requisite detail for a person to for a for an SSC to meet with the allegations and present it. is appropriately. In absence of the details, the, the basic detail of the name with whom the petition is said to have made unexplained investment in the transaction. How is he expect how is he expected to reply to the same by cropping in dark resultantly and we, we appreciate also the fairness on the part of the council in not stretching it beyond the point and also admitting clearly and, and also uh, endorsing clearly that the name of the person with whom the alleged dealing was the base for issuance of the notice. Had not been disclosed anywhere in the information supplied to the petition. Paragraph resultantly, the petition is allowed. Let the process be undertaken from the stage where it was left. The petition shall be punished. The information with all requisite details, which shall include the name of the party with whom is the petition is said to have transacted. If there is any other material sought to be relied upon by the respondent authority, it would be incumbent upon it to punish those details. Let the same be supplied within what time? Seven days. Within seven days of the receipt of copy of this order. And once the same is received, the reply shall be furnished in addition to the reply which has been already furnished within 15 days. Within 15 days. Okay. Within 15 days. The procedure to be followed by the petitioner thereafter shall be in accordance with law. For present, the petition is allowed. Caution and setting aside uh, this was the, the order in the one forty eight eighty. This is allowed. See, it does not survive in your order. Even the consequential action is taken after one forty eight eighty yes. order. Very and the consequential the actions. 144. Okay. Great. Much of Main method. It's a main method. Serial number 30. Mr. S. N. Divetia. Mr. Divetia, this time. This may not be assessment here involved is 1718. Sorry. The impune order is on page 16. And the allegation is that there is a bogus or fictitious long term capital gain. That my lords would find on in on page thirty four, para fourteen. Hmm. 
Hmm. Page 34, the bottom of that page, 34, my lords would find para 14. Hey, read my lord, para 14. Therefore, in the light of the above reasons, information and material available on record, I am of the considered view that the SSE has failed to explain the above mentioned transactions and income earned derived from therefrom during the year under consideration and the same remained unexplained and unsubstantiated as per the relevant provisions of the Act. Hence, on the basis of material available on record, which establishes that uh, that the income chargeable to tax in respect of the above mentioned unexplained transactions in the nature of transactions in penny script in the form of shares and script as defined as asset under section uh, in section 49 of 149 of the act of rupees so and so as escaped assessment you know my contentions were twofold that The alleged escapement is not in the form of an asset, but it is a income in the form of LTCG. Not that I have declared in my original return of income. So the notice would get time barred because the, the period of 10 years would not be applicable. And since it is assessment year is 1718, it would get time barred on 31st March 2021. Okay. Anything else? No, the computation is on page, you know, on, uh, it starts from page uh, 39. Hmm. And the long-term capital gain I have disclosed that uh, is on page 40, uh, mm -hmm. but it, it, it is claimed exempt as per page 40 on the bottom, the last but one para, exempt LTCG on security under 1038, 2 crore 69 lakhs, uh, 26 crore 96 lakhs and so and so. Now the computation is on page 41. Too. Yes. I mean, not one more aspect I must be must point out fairly, you know, that the what is being alleged is the name on page 40. Uh, I will if I take my notes to the allegation that which are the scripts they were alleging to be the penny stock that is stated in on page 32, para 9, that is part of the impune order. Page 32, para 9, the scripts that are alleged to be penny stock are the PMC fin, uh, FinCorp Limited and Tilak Ventures Limited, where the penny stocks whose prices were rigged. The following para, it has been discussed as to why both of these BSE listed penny stocks have been identified as bogus and used for providing accommodation entry of LTC. That's all. The net senior fit is fairly stated. In fact, the asset is entered with this bogus transaction fees. And the information is to the effect that there is one narrative who was an accommodation entry provider who is entered into price meeting. And the penny script is a private limited company it's run by a very few individuals. In turn, they are out all the money. And this penny script. Is a script where no one in the public domain knows. Only the limited people knows that at a certain point in time, the price will be rigged, will either fall or will rise. Otherwise, it will fairly consider the it has entered. It has entered into pennies, has transacted into pennies. No, no not on, on, on that script. I'm sorry. Penny page seven. Penny seven. One seven. One seven. Mm. There in the uh, bottom part, there are six penny scripts listed. Page 18, the other three. And after uh, point number nine, OC is trading, there's one monotype in India. In page 18. 
Yes. Now, can you see page eight of the name of the petition? Page eight. Page eight. Hmm. Yes. The second para. The petition submits the imprint notice as well as order number 140 with me are ready in value. Also, for the reason that the provisional computation income for KY 1718 shows down from capital gain, the security is disclaimed exempt in 10 for the of the act. The said company showed the purchase cost at respect of my like 50,000 shares of monotype India. Yes, sir. So there's a direct link between the information and the escapement of it. The, here the information has been pushed to inside portal. I think this is the transaction is being focused. Therefore, there is information which suggests that income charges are taxes at the best. But this is beyond period of four or three years. Therefore, we are taking a section of the principal CCIP. <coughs> Regarding the intention, regarding there is no asset. So can you see 149, section 149? Section 149, section 1, subclause B. Yes. Was it? B is not more than 10. So 1A, right? 1B. Yes, but not 10 years. Three years, but not more than 10 years have elapsed from the end of the relevant assessment year unless the assessing officer has in his possession books of accounts or other documents or evidence which reveal that the income chargeable to tax represented in the form of an asset. Now that asset is defined in the explanation that. After four provisions, there's an explanation. Right. it. For the purposes of clause B of this subsection, asset shall include immovable property, being land or building or gold, shares and securities. Once that advance deposit in the bank account. And therefore, the term asset shall include shares and securities. So all the criteria of section 149 1 has been fulfilled. Mr. So, Tibeti has anything to say when this time? My first contention was this one. That out, the list was a preliminary information that these are the script. But ultimately in that para six, their allegation was that these are the only two scripts which are penny stock. They started with that information. Ultimately, the assessing officer came to the conclusion that these are the only two scripts. His allegation is with regard to two. So information is started. The information was this, these are the eight scripts. Or but ultimately, his allegation in that para is that these are the only two scripts. That is my contention. And we know, so far as that time barring is concerned, I know the asset <laughs> word explanation. Symbol property being land building or shares and security. You know, my, it is not, the escaped income is not represented by the asset. It is represented by income. Because if my lords will once again refer to the clause B, escaped assessment amounts to so and so, it, it should be represented, chargeable in, in char, income chargeable to tax, represented in the form of asset. So, therefore, the alleged income should be in the form of an asset. Now, here it is an income itself by way of long term capital gain. And therefore, 
at the relevant time because prior to one amendment by 14-2021. And that lacuna is now locked. With an explanation inserted by Finance Act 2022 with effect from 1st April 2022 as per footnote 27C on page 1005. Right. Therefore, that by on that ground also, the impune notice is bad in law. In the last commission, my government said, it says income chargeable to tax. If mm -hmm. you have some relation with regard to asset, asset has been defined categorically to include shares and securities. Once you have transacted in the penny scripts, which is share, in fact a share, that is an income that has kept assessment. When is the assessment going to be completed? Likely to. This is probably by May 17. Right. We'll issue the notice not protecting at this stage. And you file your reply. So, the special C two zero three five twenty two. Petitioners before this court seeking to challenge action of the respondent. Provisions of the notice in section one forty eight. Thirty first August two thousand twenty two. Respondent issued a notice on the 31st August proposing to raise the total income of the petitioner for assessment year 1819 with the following payers. There are nine. Sorry, there are ten. We have uh, today you're filing your appearance in this? By tomorrow. By tomorrow? Okay. As the Lawrence standing council, Mrs. Rawal, wants to file her appearance tomorrow. We, by, by, by tomorrow. Uh, whatever request both the sides have been heard. Notice returnable on. Yeah. Yes. No, I will be protected till then because Sorry. it is the assessment is in the final stages. So uh, it has reached right up to the show cause come draft assessment order. That is what I am being told. You can keep it in the week starting 27th. Pardon? 27th. I'm sorry. Not? 27th. Till then, it may be, I may be protected. That is my submission. Because I have, I have no control over NFRC. I don't know when they will complete it. That's the old region. Penny script matters not Many, no, no. The, the four we wanted. The now the senior has changed. Uh, so council for the opponent shall file the reply by next by next by twenty seventh. Let the reply. Oh, sure. Thirty four. Mr. Aditya Chaukar with. Bomic Solar, yes. What is it? Uh, he wanted a uh, interim relief, right? So, did you go through it? Okay. Hmm. 140 is in this sense. That's page 23. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Which now the petitioner contends it has not been received. Hmm. In fact, his contention is there's been received post passing of 140 AD office. And this was always on the court. Page 23 is the bottom part includes. Is the information that has been attached, which has been not produced yet. Says he did not respond to this notice. 
He, of course, has thought. He admits that it has not been responded to. The reason he gives is that uh, I had not, uh, I have not had an access to the email. And that is the reason, according to him, which had, uh, uh, but his only issue which is raised here is that since you, you're supposed to be acting on the base of the record and the material that you have with you, in response to the earlier notice in pre Ashish Agrawal regime, he has replied and in detail. And he says you not even regarded that and decided the. No, no. It has gone away. No, no, no. It has gone away, but his reply, which is, which according to him is already on record, has been overlooked by. The authority concern. He has never, he doesn't say, it. we have specifically asked him as to whether, says, do you want to say that the reply which is filed or the material which had been gathered should not be looked into at all? It has to be, but the problem arises in this manner. Post 1419, there is a shift in the entire regime of one policy. The earlier reply probably said, go to the red right, on the ground, the assessing office has no belief or opinion, no reason to believe. If I consider that reply passing 140 AD order, then again the Swedish would again challenge there is no information under the new reply. No. That may not so happen because here he the stand of the revenue is that he has not at all given any reply. And that is the reason why he said that all the issues on merit which you have dealt with has already been dealt with by him in his reply. And should that reply be not construed as a reply, whatever material you've had. Has been punished under the old regime before the Ashish. Do we ask you? Do we ask you to? Uh, or you you want to argue further on this? No, we were in no. fact no no. Why we were saying is that otherwise what we had in mind, if you feel that this is something which can get terminated at an at this stage in Limini, do not mind. We can uh, actually do it, but not that we are. We are completely. Uh, we we do uh, appreciate. Because he doesn't say I filed the reply. He doesn't challenge the very factum of service of notice. His only challenge is that my earlier reply is disregarded, overlooked, not considered. Uh, leadership, uh, 148AB non-receipt has been challenged in the petition. But I am saying even despite that, this thing goes right to the root of the matter. Another thing, uh, because my learned friend has been very fair with respect to the Ashish Agarwal issue, this is not confrontational at all, but with the spirit of assisting the court. I am saying he may have apprehensions with regards to whether it would be reasons to believe or now information. But the 148AB notice, my, my Lordship, the issue is that this notice that has been issued after Ashish Agarwal is being treated as a 148AB notice. It is not. My original 148 that has been issued on me, the first one in 2021, Ashish Agarwal deems that to be the 148AB notice. What Ashish Agarwal says is, subsequent to this, you give information. My Lordship, if you just open Annexure A, it is subsequent proceedings with reference to section 148AB. The notice doesn't claim to be a 148AB notice at all. It doesn't say that this is a notice under section 148AB. It merely says that these are subsequent proceedings with reference to 148AB. Why? Because the original one is 148. Now, Ashish Agarwal leaves all defenses open to me. But out here, I am saying, when can I exercise those defenses? It is only when the 148AD order is passed. Today, he is, it is, I, I will be very clear. I am coming on a narrow compass because if I challenge everything in the 148AD order, then I have to say that I am submitting to the jurisdiction. I am saying 148AC, that is my reply, has not been considered at all. And it is deemed by the section now to be the reply. 
I, I'm not going into reasons recorded at all at this stage because it would be premature. Look, the moment to be accept your submission, saying that uh, you uh, your earlier reply has to be the challenge would always come. Then, then where was the need for the court to say that file a reply? Now, this is to be. I, I'll assist my lords on that. I'll assist my lords on that if my lords will permit me. My lords, what happened? The the factual scenario is uh, Ashish Agarwal case is with respect to all the appeals that went up in SLP from the writ petitions. Now, what happened in most of those cases, if not all, is that 148 was issued and it was immediately challenged saying that this is under the old regime and under TOLA and the new one should apply. My lords, in that, in, in those cases, 148 AB was not issued at all. Reasons, sorry, uh, I stand corrected. I had not demanded reasons recorded at all. As soon as I receive 148, I go to the high court in writ and I say that the new regime should be applicable. In almost all those cases, at least the ones in my knowledge, I, I know I'm being general out here, but the questions of asking for recorded reasons and the recorded reasons being furnished to me doesn't arise. In my case, I have not gone in writ in the first place. I am not before any high court. I am not before the Supreme Court. They said 148. I said, okay. They said reasons recorded. I said, okay. I say here, you have said uh, this thing, reasons recorded. I am giving the reply. At no point of time, even in my reply, do I say that the new regime is applicable. I am saying, okay, listen to me. Just hear me out. I am submitting to you. Whether you had submitted to the jurisdiction of the court or not, the fact remains that there is already a decision. Some of you who might have sat on the fence chose not to challenge question. Of course, it's an issue which the court will have to address someday. But I appreciate they, it. At the same time, the fact remains that there is a decision of the Apex Court. I appreciate it. And that would bind each one. Even if you have not challenged, this is already negative. Lordship, the difficulty is if I go more into Ashish Agarwal, I may dig a hole for myself. <laughs> so I may not go there. But uh, Ashish Agarwal is also very clear. 148, the region doesn't stand in eyes of law. When one participation by the SAB does not have any value money. Therefore, that one focus note is paid NTP. And then is not correct in stating it is not in the surplus B. And is the second one. It's clearly 148 AB in person to arrange it. My Lordship, because this is an interesting question, can I just take my Lordship to Ashish the, Agarwal? Which is the, the order where we had already said about the Pan India. If I may take my Lordship to Ashish Agarwal, the, the same paragraph that I had read, just, just one point needs to be noted, my Lords. One point needs to be noted. I, I apologize for this. 28.1 says the impugned section 148 notices issued to respective assessees by. On issues of notice, we fix the matter the next week with him. Uh, specific request to the Learned Council to respond to the same matter shall be proceeded with on hearing both the sides the next week. Leadership just till next week at least or they may pass order. I'm... 
that yeah. only till next week my leadership has keeping it next no, week not wanting to grant any <laughs> it's not an issue that we want to grant in fact it's but for you know some further assistance that's coming from his side and we want him to also put it in black and white we will be just uh, doing it next week so let it be I appreciate it put it here Thirty-five, Mr. Dinal Shah. Not my learned friend waves that part. If subject, he would wave. Will be then what is it, Mr. Please. Please. Not before my learned friend argues. Only one alternative submission also. Ultimately, this long-term capital gain is exempt under Section Ten Thirty-Eight because it has been subjected to STT. So whether a trust pays the tax or I pay, it's ultimately an exempt income and that's why there is no escapement. Do you have a chance to go? Okay. But it's a uh, transaction with regard to investment in venture capital because certain new sections were there which gives exemption to this venture capital. Fund. Correct. Income of venture capital fund is exempt under section 23 FB. We have seen that. And about under section 115 U, it says that the receipt of income by the investor, it could be treated as if that he himself has invested the amount directly in that uh, third party company or third party investment for uh, the venture capital needs to be ignored. This is how it has been treated. Here, the information is received to the effect that the venture capital is denied exemption. So, that is so, so no details were provided to the effect that why the venture capital has been denied the exemption in the particular section. But based on that, Manu, the assessing officer prima facie concluded that since the venture capital is denied exemption. The assessee is also required to make the payment of tax on that. Now, my learned friend is arguing that it's a capital gain amount, which is even otherwise exempt. So it is subject to scrutiny. At this stage, it is not possible or not borne out from the record that why that exemption was denied, whether it was treated as bogus entity, we don't know. Today, in the rich petition challenging Mother. Order under section 148, capital AD, the scope of you know, scrutiny is very limited only to the aspect of you know, the procedural compliance as well as you know, on a prime of basic case. If there is no information at all, then admittedly there is an information. And the contention that it is not escapement or there is no, uh, uh, there is an exemption, all these are the arguments which are required to be you know, dealt with at the stage of final year. And one more argument, finally. That is filing petition after almost one year. Then the order is passed in the March 2022. The initial order is passed. That is dated 31st March 2022. The petition is filed on February 2023. He could have challenged at that time. For one year, he has not. Now it is pleaded that the, uh, the since the uh, uh, assessment is time barring in the near, near future, the assessing officer is proceeding with the assessment. Special civil application 2399 of 23. Petitioner is before this court seeking the intervention of the court by way of issuance of the read for caution in setting aside the order pass in section 148 AD of the Income Tax Act, dated 31st March 22, and also caution the notice under section 148 issued on 31st March 22, whereby the respondent is proposing to reassess the total income of the petition for the assessment year 1819 paragraph. We're not inclined to entertain anyone. May I, may I request then of withdraw? Sorry. May I request to withdraw that? That we can permit. Only one submission 
or if my lords are, if I just make one minute, the only thing is there is no allegation about the security in which I have invested. We're not about anything. We just can all these issues because there's no, we don't find any violation of principle of natural justice. No, I'm not no. arguing on that. Correct. Two issues of law. Yes, we can always consider it if those authorities, they feel that this is not something, you know, which cannot be considered. You can always come before this court. Eventually here, the court will entertain. No, my only... Not at this stage we are inclined to. So if you want it, we can either no, dictate then, the order or we can... Then I wish to withdraw. Right. to withdraw at this stage. You can say that we had uh, made a request to learn at the standing council, Mr. Patel, to assist this goes at the stage of at, at the at this stage of admission, and we appreciate his uh, assistance. No pledge. Forty-eight, Mr. Vivek Kamri. Not sir, requesting for the time on behalf of Mr. Kamri. Sorry, requesting for the time on behalf of. Mr. No time. Tell us. No time. Please tell us what you do. What is it? Four o'clock. Sarah ends at four. Can it be after one or two methods? Yes. Rajabai, please give it. Serial number 50, uh, 49. Uh, Mr. S. N. Ivetia. This is for fifteen sixteen. By way of uh, present petition, petition seeks to challenge the notice under section one forty eight, dated twenty seven July twenty two. After disposing of the objections under one forty eight A D on twenty seven July twenty two for the assessment, and seeking to reopen the assessment for the said assessment with the following prayers. Para 10. We are the land advocate, Mr. Gubetia, who seeks to challenge this on the ground of the notice being time barring, as also on other grounds. Arjun. This court that this information which they with the AO in no manner suggests the income chargeable to the tax has escaped assessment. Moreover, it doesn't fall within the asset is one of the contentions, right? Yes, that is the main contention. Right. It's, there it is, is no essay. It is also not falling within the definition of an asset as prescribed under explanation to section 149.1. What is written on 14th March? This is proceedings of the assessment may continue, however. No final assessment shall be received. Well, protection. Hmm? Protection may be allowed. Yes, because that is no correct. final. Not this uh, item number uh, 52 is identical, same party. That is for assessment year 1314. That we are allowing, even otherwise. <laughs> 2499 of 2023. So, challenge here is to the notice under section 148. Dated 27th August 2022, as also the order passed under Section 148 AD of the Income Tax Act, with the following prayers, para 10 paragraph. We have heard the learned advocate, Mr. Debetia, who has heavily relied on the decision of this court in the case of special CSO and so Kinara. Issued the notice, issued notice, urgent notice, made returnable forthwith. Who will be appearing in this matter? So Gandhi Mesana. Right? It's a Gandhi Nagar. 
No, it's, it's a Gandhinagar, sorry. It's a Gandhinagar, Mrs. Mrs. Rao. Okay. We have requested the Australian Standing Council, Mrs. Travel, to appear in this matter. Who, with Mrs. Mr. Karan Sangani has appeared. And on hearing both the sides, noticing that the issue is covered by the decision of this court without giving separate and independent reasons, the election is being disposed of, allowing this election. Yes. Serial number 15, S. N. Divetia. This is for 2014 15. So 14 15. 14 15. Identical order in this yes. Identical order. So notice date 148 is 26 July 22. And 148 AD order is also the same, same date. Here, who will be appearing? Mrs. Rao. This is Gandhi Dam. Mrs. Mrs. Rao will appear. Mr. Karan and his name shall be released. It's identical. 14, 15. So 14, 15. 53 is the same. Sorry? I'm sorry. No, 53 is also the same part. 53 the same. Part. And that is for 1314. 1314. This is 1314. The assessment uh, 148 AD is 26 July 22. 148 is 26 July 22 also. The prayers also, and then the identical order. Here, who would be appearing? Oh, Mrs. Rawal. Mrs. Rawal will appear with Mr. Karan Sanani. 51, Mr. Sudhir Mehta. 1415. So 1415, Mr. Sudhir Mehta's name shall be written. It's uh, uh, Ahmedabad. Who will be appearing? Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Ravan. Mrs. Ravan, Ahmedabad. She's uh, 148 uh, notices dated 4th May 1914. No, it's 24th August 2022. And the 148 AD order is also of the very date, right? So just a moment. No. 148 AD is 24th August and uh, notice 148 also is 24th. And earlier notice pre-Ashish Agrawal case is uh, 25th June 2021. This identical order is allowing this petition or change that in the site notice and the order board. Yes. 54, uh, Mr. S. N. Divetia. You know, you have different provision is there. 153, capital C. That is when a search has taken place in case of A and material has been found relating to B, then in order to assess or reassess that B, a notice would be issued under section 153C. I mean, Lord, the point is this, that I am repeatedly asking the assessing officer that if you please give me satisfaction note so that I can give a reply or I can take appropriate action. My Lords would find that how many times I have asked the assessing officer, my Lord, that starts from page 3030. <clears throat> When is the last request made? The first request and the last request. Yes, first, first request is on. My Lord, that first request is 7-3-2022. Uh, uh, and that is on page 3030. In the box, last but one, it is pointed out. That dear sir, you are requested to provide the copy of satisfaction note under 153C related to present proceeding. Kindly do the needful and oblige. Then not going next also. Because that for all these six years, I have made an identical addition, but he has issued notice for 2019-20. Then, my Lord, on, on page 37. So, 2-12-22, you have to send 40. Last notice, yes, ma'am. That last notice is on. 40, uh, page. On page 41. Uh, that, that is, uh, I'm sorry, my Lord, that is on page. 40, 40. Yes, 4-6. So, and ultimately, he is now issuing a final notice on page 25, as if the asset on page 25, my lords would find that he wants to complete the assessment by giving the some part of the material which he alleges that this is on the basis of which 
I have issued 153C, you know, on page 25, and that notice is issued on 30th January 23, and he has given time. Rather, to um, hearing date is also mentioned in that block on page 25, 4 to 2023. Special C two five zero one of twenty three by way of the present petition. Petition seeks to challenge the validity of notice dated first July twenty one under section one fifty three C of the Income Tax Act for assessment year fourteen fifteen to two thousand twenty twenty one issued by the respondent, whereby he is directed to prepare his written of total income for the all these assessment years. Paragraph: The essential challenge on the part of the petitioner is that. The respondent had issued the notice under section 153C for AY 1415 to 1920. The show notice also stated that during the course of a search and seizure under section 132, carried out on 15th October 19 in the case of Land Broker and Financial Group in Ahmedabad. Some incriminating document and digital data were found and seized. Paragraph, then according to the petitioner, he went on requesting the officer concerned to provide the copy of satisfaction note in view of the decision of the Supreme Court in case of CIT versus Vijay Bhai Chandrani 357 ITR 713. No, he just paid till date. And he apprehends that the fresh assessment under section 153C may be finalized without availing him an opportunity. Prayer sought for her as follows. There are 10 notice for final disposal to be made written again. We post it next week. But proceeding to be stayed till the we end. We keep it next week. So you can give a copy in advance. Who will be appearing in this yes, matter? I think Mr. Raval will appear. Yes. Because it's a take a copy. We are also issuing the notice, but then take a copy and take instructions next week. We are keeping. It's just a question as to whether the information that he's seeking should be supplied to him or not, as therefore the notice for final disposal. Okay. So let Mr. Patel take this. Good light. Yes. 55. Mr. Sudhir Mehta. 13 14 lordships. It's 25043. Petition is for this. Petition is before this court under Article 226, Constitution of India, seeking to challenge the action of the responding authority in issuing the notice in the section 148, 20, originally on 25th June 21, or AY 1314. In view of the judgment of the Apex Court in case of Union of India versus Ashish Chagrawal, 444 ITR page 1. The notice under section 148 AB has been issued. The order came to be passed on 30th August 2020 under section 148 AD. And thereafter, the notice of the self same date is issued on 31st August 22 with the following prayers. No, see, seeking to seeking to reopen the assessment year 13 On the ground that the notice issued is contrary to law. The prayers sought for it, prayer 7. Paragraph um, on hearing the learned advocate, Mr. Sudhir Mehta, stood by Ms. Shelly Mehta. We deem it appropriate to issue the notice, uh, urgent notice we made, making it returnable forthwith. Who will appear? Mrs. Mrs. Learned Since Learning Council, Mrs. Rawal appears, assisted by learned advocate, Mr. Tarin Sangar. We notice that this court in case of Ganara, see, both notice and 148. Let's Fifty-six, Sudhir Mehta. Fourteen, fifteen. It's fourteen, fifteen. Notice is uh, earlier notice, twenty-fifth June, twenty-one. The subsequent notice is thirty-first August, twenty-two. One forty-eight AD order is also the is thirty-eight, thirty-eight, three-zero, and one forty-eight is thirty-first August, twenty-two. Identical order. Here, Mrs. Rawal would have given. Mr. Karan Sangani. Yes. 
1947 सुधीर मेहता 1314 इस 13 असेसमेंट ईयर 1314 148 एडी सॉरी बिफोर दैट 148 अर्लीर नोटिस इस 21 अप्रैल 21 पोस्ट आशीष अग्रवाल 148 एबी नोटिस ऑन 23 मई 22 एंड 148 एडी इस 31 जुलाई एंड 148 इस 31 जुलाई ओ वेरी बी Prayer sought for, prayer seven. Mrs. Ahmedabad, Mrs. Rawal would have made me same same matter. Mr. Karan Singh, I mean. Lodge, offline. 58, at general request, 59, Ms. Pooja Baswar. No, she for Pooja Baswar. Page number... My Lord, my page, page number 150 is 159, Lordship. For the co-active Lordship, in the very same... Sorry, page, please use the mic. 50, Lordship. Page number 158 and 159, Lordship. For the co-active in the very same FIR, Lordship. They are being considered granting stay as per 7, para 7D. Land grabbing? Land grabbing, Lordship. Para 2, Lordship. Relying on the SCA 2995 of 221. What is your case? First, tell us your case. No, she we are the no, she. If my Lord may kindly paste to her page number 24. Hmm. 24. No, she. In bottom, no, she. Fair for any vigat. Property card, no, she. Hmm. No, she. May I read, no, she. That yes. first column. Arad Dharani Arji Lagat Raju Thayal Merban Collector Sahib Vadodrana Tenancy Hukam Kramang Tenancy SR number 25 so and so, Tariq Pandar Bara Satang, Member Collector Varodra Sahibna Bin Kheti Hukam Kramang, Number Land, so and so Adare, TP Scheme Number Thronna Final Plot, Number 881-897-873, Nikul, SC Agyar Chorus Meter Jamin Sri, Maji Bhai Jina Bhai Ratwana Name Bin Kheti Tata, Tata Varodra Mahanagar Seva Sadhan TP Scheme Thronna B Form Ane F Form Nikhari Nakal Adare, Final plot number so and so, Sitra for so and so, final plot number so and so, Sitra for Chorus meter, final plot number so and so, Sitra for so and so, Mate, Maji by Gina by Ratunu Nam, Dakal Karani, North Kari. Now, Lord Shiv, further, we all, we are the four petitioners before my Lord. We are the bona fide purchasers from this the very said owner of the land, Lord Shiv. And we have constructed our property on the very said land, Lord Shiv. Now, case of the, uh, if my Lord may have a kind of look at page number uh, FIR, Lord Shiv, now. As per now of uh, officers, that this is a government land, but we relied on these property cards as well as various other documents. I had not based on record, just not to overload this petition. But just just a moment, you purchased from this Mahiji Bhai, Jena Bhai, Ratu. No, no, Lordship. I had purchased. Lordship, my Lord, may kindly look place to have page number twenty seven. Mm -hmm. We have purchased from Santa and Bachu Bhai, Ratu. Who is she? Uh, sees the uh, uh, lordship. Uh, lordship page forty lordship. Page page forty lordship. Four zero lordship. Four zero lordship. Hmm. Bachu Bhai Rathod lordship. The owner Manji Bhai Jina Bhai Rathod is the main original owner of the land. We are lordship the Varasdar lordship. Bachu Bhai was my the seller's father, Santa Vinas, daughter of Bachu Bhai Lordship. That is before Tala T Lordship. And on the very side, proceedings taken for Lordship. Even Lordship, any order was passed by the collector, verifying the all entire data record Lordship. Even this is any land, non agricultural land Lordship. No petitioner before my Lord. All right. This is hmm. a this is a uh, pay degree before the Talati. Talati come Mantri. Now just show as to how you are in position. Lordship. How you are in position. Lordship, page 27 is the sale hmm. agreement by the way of sale deed, Lordship. We have purchased from Santa Ben Lordship. Hmm. By paying the due consideration, Lordship. And three of the petitioner before my Lord are Lordship senior citizens. Is it about 60 years, Lordship? How you have purchased the land? Lordship. You have purchased land by way of sale deed? Lordship, sale deed. That? Lordship, this is a sale deed, page 27. It's a sale deed, Lordship. Page 31. 
27 lord ship yeah 31 lord ship there were 27 plots of land all different different 27 purchasers have purchased the plots lord ship i am we are the four of the that 27 purchasers as per fir lord ship when did you get the notice no ship that notice lordship i had inquired but is the government proceedings is the land belongs to government as per them we are it's not it's a government land no ship we were not made party lordship so we are not in what it may be but then no ship as per fir when, no ship when were you when were you issued the notice no ship in record lordship i have not placed any notice and even other lordship we have not received any notice before because we are the purchaser of santa ben santa santa ben might have received the notice so if you not issued the notice why are you before this court but lordship as and that, we have lordship for, for what reason are you we are that? further purchasers lordship we are having no, no, you might be the further purchasers lordship. but then if notice have not been issued to you lordship on what basis are you on the apprehension i mean you have come lordship um, my my humble submission is lordship as per the officers this is the government land lordship the inquiry even lordship as per my knowledge lordship even santa ben was not the part of proceedings that was taken undertaken before the uh, officers lordship santa ben is not before us we will not lordship, lordship. her case she can defend her case no lordship for santa ben lordship so why should we just go into that aspect today you show us as to why should we entertain your petition lordship because lordship the uh, right now lordship the land under consideration that is we are occupying that land as of now lordship but then the no, officer concern lordship has not as yet decided on as to whether to issue you the notice or not lordship whether this is a fit case where shanta ben is responsible and therefore the others lordship she might have misled others or we do not know because he lordship her case they might he might find genuine but why are you before this court okay appre my apprehension not sure my apprehension my apprehension before is not sure that sanjay si bachu si parmar lordship even her wife neeta ben parmar they both are arrested lordship even they are the similar kind of purchasers lordship they have purchased entire one final plot lordship they are lordship but their name was in the fir that is undeniable lakshmi ben sanjay si parmar page 20 of the fir their name was there that is undeniable but they are also this like me they are also one of the purchasers so they were arrested lordship even sanjay is, is still in behind the bar lordship lakshmi ban is raised on bail lordship so lordship our apprehension we are the senior citizens lordship and lordship the entire issue of ultra virus is under challenge before my lord lordship lordship because it is it will not be recoverable once we were, would be arrested lordship our we will not be in a big trouble lordship so meanwhile when the entire issue is under pending before my lord we also may be protected lordship looking that very same aspect lordship for time being when still others are protected lordship at a limited prayer to my lord because otherwise lord, we, we we would be in trouble lordship because even my our properties are also based on that land lordship at many point of time they may demolish that so property. some notice has been issued by the crime branch and lordship we have not received any notice regarding this land grabbing Mm. But any many any point of time, Lord Sir, we may face the trouble, Lord Sir. It is Lord Sir because mm -hmm. I have gone through these papers. So essentially, their names, yes, rightly are not in, indicated in the FIR. Nothing it is shown. Uh, it seems that because some proceedings have happened against somebody, therefore, on that apprehension, they have approached this honourable court. Irrespective of that, if this is the only concern, they could have always approached the jurisdictional court with reference to protection for this aspect. 
as far as the issue with reference to ultra wide is it would essentially the locus would be with an individual who is otherwise directly agreed as it appeals to the honorable court i am being lost if that parity order to the other may be passed or if timing that order on your names are not there in all of ir lordship nobody has issued you the notice Not if it. you're still apprehensive of something the anticipatory bail is something you can always go for we do not, not know because if it is the fir which has made you run to this court Not him. there's nothing on which you know we can entertain Not this him. petition wise that you want to come Not may request only press on the grounds of parity only lot 158 other my i i i i i am lordship i got what my lot fall from my lot lordship But lordship, it were unnecessary lordship. If I'll get the bail lordship, I would be supposed to face a trial even lordship. Once lordship, the matter is already in under challenge before my lord lordship. The relief I would be having under this would be more larger lordship than anticipated. So, land grabbing case also, each one will have to look at it on its own merit. It can't be that just because somebody has been protected, then no. your merits cannot be looked into, or merits lordship. will not be looked into, and lordship. simply you know on the. case that you are challenging the virus the court shall have to then give it. that is not the way then everybody will come challenging the virus no individual case will be examined by the court mm, true, that is it. not the way not sure and here we don't find anywhere in any of the documents not even it. indicating your name not sure so in such circumstances when you have come here rushing there may happen something to you how do we entertain that Lordship, that's my my humble prayer, Lordship. My humble just just humble prayer, prayer, Lordship. Because we are the further purchase of the the very state land, Lordship. If we any because and Lordship, if this act, Lordship, under challenge is under challenge, Lordship. Any point of time, if my if there is no cause for no sir there is no cause for you to file this petition no sir but as we are for the matter wherever the fire has been filed the people have come rushing to this court of, of filing what has happened is that there are certain matters which are also filed before the other benches of the honorable court where they are uh, pursuing the remedies otherwise with reference to anticipatory bill and other there might be few petitions also part of the no, but then those remedies of course nobody can say that once they have approached yes. those for other remedies they cannot approach this court challenging and questioning this but there doesn't appear to be anything Absolutely. against this person today and there when he has come before this court uh, we are just wondering that why this is because uh, it seems the only only thing which has led is that in some similar petition there is an order which has been passed protecting therefore that has led them to approach this honorable court on the apprehension as an added precaution perhaps that something may not go against them the only difficulty that we have is that the moment it is tagged under the head of ultra virus everything gets stalled and then it is ultimately there might be a number of petitions with the honorable court may add that find that those are not one of those petitions that is the only aspect as rightly indicated by the honorable bench that each matter would have to be looked into whether it qualifies for the purpose of uh, test of wherever there has been already uh, interim protection granted uh, when the uh, if if all the matters you know we've been we have nothing to say but then yes. when they are approaching this court for fresh matters just only on the ground that this is what yes. uh, so we'll at least on uh, And basic facts there shall have to be something where we are convinced that we are entertaining this petition special criminal application 2180 of 2023 
by way of present petition petition it's seeks to challenge the initiation of proceedings under the gujarat land grabbing prohibition act 2020 okay. against the applicant based on the proceedings want to withdraw no my request for some time there if my lots are rejecting my would request for some time because other matter what some time for what the time it, to be given? it may be kept pending because may, maybe that no relief question. relief pass over so to the other the petitioners came to be registered on 21st january 2020 in that case i am permitted to withdraw in that case. cr number so my lot so are rejecting i would be to withdraw police station district Vadodara city for the offenses punishable under section so and so read with section 4 3 and 5 of the gujarat land grabbing prohibition act the petition six the following prayers para seven after arguing some for some time learned uh, advocate jaydeep sindhi jaydeep sindhi for puja baswal assisted by Ms. puja baswal six withdrawal of this permitted obliged lawyer Forty-eight. Vivek Okamri. Then I am requesting for some time to put some better particulars as well as some documents. Because my case before this honourable court is to an extent that I am not a party to the entire transaction between the parties. You may argue the matter. Please, your lordships. Here, your lordships may kindly see. I am challenging the values of the act. Before I, before that, I may give the facts with regard to my case. Page number 39 is the notice which I am challenging before this honorable court. My name is shown at serial number 8 in the respondent. Your leadership sees 8. This notice has been issued in pursuance to the complaint given at page 41. The complaint at page 43, there is no allegation against me. First of all. The main grievance of the respondent number two here is to an effect that she is wife. She is wife of one Dinesh Bhai, who happens to be real brother of number one to five in the notice. Number one two five by illegally deleting his name from where is the application? Page forty one. Forty one. That's not our application. Sorry. The online fee payment trace. That is the complaint. This is how the complaints are filed under the land grabbing. It is a notice to you. That you've been I'm intimated sorry. that this. I'm sorry, your leadership. Somehow, we will make it Rajuat Karel chain. Block server number Atla, Atluk Shetrafur. Hmm. 41 is the receipt. Thereafter, 42 and 43 hmm. is the content of the complaint. Yes. 43 is the complaint. I may read. She's, no? she's a widow. She is the widow of Dinesh Bhai. Mm -hmm. She Dinesh. says that I have a right in my husband's property. Please. Your which is uh, which is survey number 577, Khata number so and so, actor mm -hmm. of Virochan Nagar, Amda, Taluka Sana, District Ahmedabad. Arupi Samadda, Tomad Daroe, Bega Madi, Kota Dastave Chubanavi, Kota Purao Atare. Amara Hakitos Hoachata, 
જમીન પચાવી પાડવા વિરુદ્ધ ફરિયાદ કરેલ છે નાઉ ધીસ ઇઝ બીન અ કમ્પ્લેન ઓફ ફર્સ્ટ ઓક્ટોબર ટ્વેન્ટી ટુ યસ in the response against, to which the hmm, notice was issued on 28th of january 2023 wherein i am shown at serial uh, number 88 as a respondent hmm. now your leadership the main grievance of the respondent number 2 here in is to an effect that respondent number 125 who happens to be real brother and sisters of dinesh bhai have shown that respondent number that dinesh bhai has died without leaving any of the heirs and he was unmarried yes and respondent number 125 in the process of getting the name related of mr dinesh bhai who are, who happens to be husband who is claimed as a husband of the respondent number 2 the affidavits were sworn in by respondent number 125 with to which respondent number 6 to 7 were the witness and thereafter the uh, thereafter the entries were mutated and certified yes. 125 are the real brothers and sisters of dinesh bhai okay then what happened they hmm. made an application for mutating their names and deleting name of dinesh bhai in the revenue records hmm. by showing saying that dinesh bhai has died without leaving any heir and he was unmarried okay yes so now this rekha ben she is not a she is not a widow relationship okay. in my case is, is this why is that i am not connected with this ca- transaction by any means of okay. course the affidavit which are sworn in so for- there are there are couple of names which you have given 6 7 8 9 10 yes 10. 6 and 7 are the witnesses to the affidavit made by the respondent number 125 just a moment 6 and 7 are the witnesses then yes 8. i am number 8 hmm i have no connection with the land or even any okay then with the entire transaction 9 10 11 12 12 kanu bhai tanuja kamlesh bhai it happens that it appears that respondent number 12 hmm. is the now per, uh, is a purchaser he is possessing the land respondent number 12 hmm. and he was having possession of the land who he claims that he is having possession given by virtue of sale deed from father of respondent number 125 okay so in what way are you connected with this land that is my case that i am not connected with this All case all right so so why is it that uh, that this notice has been issued long back you ever gone you have represented yourself have you said that you are not your in any manner have... connected with it in fact even i have also got the records after filing of the petition i have got the records mm. which were uh, the affidavits and everything which was filed before the revenue authorities mm. for getting the name deleted of dinesh bhai therein also i am not the witness which i want to place on record mm. we'll call for the detail please call for the details from concerned uh, authority and uh, as to what is uh, otherwise uh, why could you have not gone before the concern authority and said that you i have gone before the concern authority what uh, where is your representation before that authority well, my statement is recorded oral statement is recorded before that and they don't give the copy of the oral statement hmm then when was that that was in pursuance to this notice itself on 31st of january 2023 31st january please your 23 31st of january 23 23 
and nothing thereafter has happened thereafter i am not aware about the proceedings however the main impression of the petitioner is this way that once there is any report mm -hmm. then the police authorities without mm -hmm. any preliminary inquiry they register the fir would like to have assistance from you sir just find out he says that a uh, uh, couple of the persons who have been named here by the lady the widow uh, are uh, either witnesses or in possession but so far as he is concerned uh, there is uh, nothing that is uh, special civil application 2474 petitioners before this court seeking to question and challenge the action of the respond authority pursuant to an application moved by a widow who is the respond number 3 here being number you can just say it from c at page 24 take that number according to learned advocate mr vivek bambare other persons who have been named as opponents by the lady rekha ben have some connections with the alleged act but the present applicant has no connection he also has given his uh, statement before the authority concern on 31st january 2023 he is unaware of any outcome thereafter he urges that because of his apprehension he is before this court we have requested learn it agb mr sharma to ascertain the details and assist the court in this regard if necessary he may call for the file in confidentiality and present it before this court to be posted tomorrow this is good amen amen 160 for tomorrow sorry sir for tomorrow i have some difficulty can it be a day after or the day 20, after 28th or 21st day after i am obliged for 165 was mentioned by my priority yes question of our tender matter where we have been blacklisted our tomorrow is the last day when new tenders are to be submitted tomorrow is the last day in fact uh, the honorable police should notice it is kept on 3rd of april by lalit and who civil application is i want the same it has been fixed by the honorable chief justice so he has argued the same thing upon ultimately it has been fixed by the honorable court considering the urgency of today it, it was fixed today yes yes earlier also fixing was right. and it was Fine. In that case, we'll hear tomorrow. Tomorrow, two. tomorrow. Please uh, remind us uh, once the admission matter is over. So please remind us because we do understand that it is tomorrow. Tomorrow, two thirty. Two thirty. You can. You can. It can. It can happen, or you, maybe you can be here at one o'clock. Fine. One o'clock. May I make a request, sir? But no, I am sorry. In fact, I am sorry that I am troubling lots. No, no, no. Sir, but ten subject to a lot. Sir, tomorrow day after. I need only three minutes exactly. whenever it's convenient to lot guys you please give uh, mr bart the time you know you may, would like to may i may i mention 11 and 13 madam and requesting for interim relief so any day in the prime madam 11 to 13 we have to hear uh, both the sides so i be the side who's appearing mr karan Mr. Mr. Karan, you have any objection to 11 to 13 to grant any relief what what was it we have not granted the relief the asset ground is there the entire bank account has been treated as We have filed reply one matter. It needs to be asked. Can we get one? You have filed already. Reply reply one has been given today. Today it has been given. All right. In that case, we can keep it on twenty eight two zero. Two. Hmm. Okay. Oh, you can say eleven to fifteen. Which matter you filed? Cell number eleven. One. Eleven. The reply has already been filed. Rejoinder, you need to file. You don't need to file. I'll be filing it. Maybe. All right. Rejoinder, if needs to be filed, shall be done during the course. for hearing both the sides on the aspect of interim relief which is being pressed by the learned advocate for the petitioner mr trivedi matter is mr uh, matter to be posted on 2820 lord chief for 142 lord chief it is matter pertains assessment year 
uh, and lordship that uh, right. you can you can give those numbers where it is 14 15 but please ask the other side also they can they will they may it is 14 14 15 it was verified and the Gajar, right, please give that you can see the learned uh, standing council, Mr. Patel submits that the MA had already been filed in these matters, which have been disposed of, which have been dismissed and disposed of. Notice for final disposal. Uh, on last Friday, that is the uh, 10th, a matter was listed to a lordship for order. First, first, let Lord, me speak. LPA 1159 of 17 and allied matters, let the government read them. Mr. KB Pujara, Mr. Nikul Soni, Mr. P.A. Jadeja, Mr. Ekram Kureti. For the reasons recorded, we dismiss all the latest written appeal preferred by the state as well as by the read applicants. We hereby confirm the judgment and order passed by the learned single judge. We further clarify that the read applicant shall be entitled to areas of difference of wages three years preceding the filing of read petitions before this court. We shall carry simple interest at the rate of 8% from the date when the applicant became entitled till the realization of the actual amount. The respondent state authorities are directed to make such payment, preferably within a period of three months from the date of receipt of copy of this order. We choose not to entertain the relief sought for by the rate applicant seeking regularization. There we, as a one-time measure, we suggest what was even otherwise observed by the learned single judge and confirmed by the Honorable Division Bench while dealing with the issue of ad hoc lecturers. ML, ML Kesri's decision we may court. The ML Kesri's decision where the court had said that one-time measure can be adapted for the purpose of absorption. Lord, so the regularization part of it, and we'll leave it to the state to just consider that part. Please, please. Okay. Lord, for a direction of my time, please. Please, please. Serial number two, uh, Mrs. Vadia Gandhi and Mr. Harshit Tolia, Mrs. VMP. We are given to understand that, uh, uh, there is some application which has been moved to make a change in the written statement. Please, madam. With the trial court. Yes, ma'am. Who has done that? The respondents have filed an application for amending their written statement now. Hmm. Application for stay of the suit probably is beyond the scope of even the appeal from. But why are you insisting it? It's in a week's time. Something is to go going to say. Nothing to do with exhibit. Five. Correct. But then according to the time, the court has there. Time. In fact, I'll see if I can... In November, we have filed. I, how would this and the, and the, the, of and and the written statement, what you have filed is, uh, I mean, why is it that, when when was that? After the hearing was over? Yes. No, yes. Was yes. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Those two paragraphs which we but would the court not then consider those, those aspects? Back in given and why, of but why, are you in a, uh, why are you in a hurry? Let this be in a week. Uh, where is the, the, uh, in fact, no, no, chief, sir, we have given the application for amendment along with the... We have, we have given the application for amendment. The notches can just have a look. And Please. they have objected also. The notches may find the amendment. Please. Yeah. The notches may see the... At page 12. Because of the exhibit 5 uh, being heard and the written statement amendment. Have no, really we, no, we don't want to entertain anything, but at the same time, why in the on the part of your clients? This is just. Uh, no, there is is it a, so, so any. The logistics, we have why why is there an. November, okay. And they have sought for time. Mm -hmm. We see their objections to the, uh, to the amendment. Hmm. They have raised all their objections that it should not be granted. It changes the nature. It will prejudice them. 
If it so, changes the nature, it's for the court well, to decide. Decide exactly. It will but decide. May I, may I put it this way, Malaj? Yeah, sure. The difficulty is this way, Malaj, that our apprehension is that in case the trial court today is insisting for hearing on this amendment application. Now suppose our suppose we allow this application. Please, Malaj. The the one which we have it before okay. us. Please, Malaj. Okay. Or we do not. Oh, in what way is it going to have a bearing on this? So, Malaj, the uh, apprehension that we have is twofold. One, that in case if this amendment application is allowed, for example, then by virtue of doctrine of relation back, this pleading will be presumed to have been on record on the date of filing of the written statement, which is of 2020, 12th March 2020, as if this pleading was already there. Kindly, therefore, we have placed that application for amendment on record, Malaj. Absolutely incorrect because it is Exhibit 5. My friend has filed this application saying that appeal from order is a continuation of proceedings. It is not. A first appeal is a continuation. An appeal from order is heard even on the documents as it stood. I can file additional documents. They have no bearing on the Exhibit 5. If documents are filed after Exhibit 5 is heard, that doesn't uh, change the merits of the Exhibit 5. The apprehension is completely misconceived. An amendment to a written statement which is not even taken into account in an Exhibit 5. In an Exhibit 5, the applicate, the affidavit in reply is taken into account. The written statement has no bearing on the Exhibit 5. I am not amending my reply at all. Exhibit 5 has the application, has my affidavit, has their rejoinder, has the documents which were before the court at the stage of Exhibit 5. May I just indicate, Malaj, if your lordship may kindly see page 11, I, your lordship's rightly said that this is not to be looked into, but the only uh, apprehension why we are raising this contention is that para 2, page 11, it is the contention of the respondent that otherwise they have maintained in the original written statement that there is no actual overlap between the services provided by both the parties. Kindly see at page 12, para H from the top, where now they say that this registration that we have in our favor from 1996 is so wide that it covers almost all the services. It creates a monopoly. That is the stand that they now they want to take. Our contention is that 12th of March 2020 is the date when the written statement was filed by the respondents. In March of 2021, I filed an application for amendment for the first time saying that I want to add damages to my plane to which the amendment application was granted. They filed their amended written statement also in May 2021. It is after a period of one year now, after the conclusion of hearing before your lordships, that this application is filed now in November 2023, uh, 22. Your lordships reserved the matter for orders on 17th of October. This application is on 9, November 2022, thereafter, my lords. All that right. is the... All right. Whatever that might be. But is the court concerned not to look into that? I'm sorry. Ma the court concern is not to look into that. There are set hmm. principles as to when the written statements can be permitted to be amended and it's such a well laid down law that nobody else needs to say anything it is for the concern court to actually see that if it is going to change everything the very nature of the suit and if that is an attempt according to you by them then the court shall need to look into that why, why should we tell them right now as to that they have done it wrongly or rightly or no, they should be doing this? My, or my, my prayer is not that that your lordships may decide at this stage that whether this is a but right application. You or tell us right. whether we allow the appeal in your favor or we do not allow the appeal in your favor. How is it going to have a bearing on the Because my lords, the stage further would be to frame the issues on Correct. the basis of the pleading of both the parties. Correct. In the stage of framing of the issues, the court concerned will have to look at the plaint as well as the written statement both. Our case before your lordship is that at the stage of hearing of the Exhibit 5, it was the original written statement as it was filed in March 2020 and the amended written statement of May 2020 that was considered. To, is the court need to look into the written statement at all? If at all, even when we are looking at Exhibit 5, Exhibit 5 are never being decided on written statements, uh, largely. I, no, I, largely. I understand. If today, whatever the written statements or whatever the material which we have had, we may be deciding it. But if your anxiety is that this allowing this at this stage may change the very nature of the suit, argue before the court concern. One. Two, if you can show us as to how our deciding on either side shall have a bearing on the suit or on the framing of the issues, you can point out. So, if your lordship may kindly consider it from this point of view, 
that once the uh, either way the appeal is decided by a lordship court the decision would be on the strength of the pleadings so far which were available on record obviously now by virtue of this amendment application in case if the trial court decides this application either way again the question would be of doctrine of relation back today your lordships would i i, I take a case where your lordships allow See, the appeal so suppose and, so yes. suppose uh, if the appeal is allowed yes madam and they challenge and question it before the yes, supreme madam. court yes then they would be according to you entitled to say that this has been uh, yes. now yes allowed the written yes. statement and therefore yes that aspect needs to be taken into consideration is that what your apprehension yes, is yes madam so okay. therefore i am saying that till the time your lordships decide my prayer is that till the time your lordships decide i am i am requesting this please wait please wait even if suppose that is challenged if it it goes in your favor and if it is challenged ultimately both the sides are going to know and going to tell the court the big court that this is how it was it's not something you know which is going to be argued in abstract well it's the law as is has been settled by the honorable supreme court is that once the amendment is allowed mm -hmm. it is for the concerned court to declare that whether the amendment would be uh, with applicability of doctrine of relation back or not in case if the trial court decides that no this will be with the uh, applicability of doctrine of relation back in that case this would create co complexities and further litigations in that case my my only anxiety before your lordships today is that your lordships have otherwise reserved it there is no otherwise anxiety for the trial court also to proceed with the matter when we are awaiting the judgment this is just a a week's time that you need to wait for exactly in fact today and, morning manners and uh, apart from that uh, you can make a request we can at the best say that you can make a request i would be i would, I would be let them make independent they have already made it and it has been granted this right. this contention is misconceived in fact that today morning there we there there we ground to argue today i think you uh, you possibly uh, the both the things are not correctly Absolutely connected correct. they're not not correctly connected for the simple reason that whatever may happen it will have to be independently examined you may make out your case before the court comes in my my only anxiety today is malas that in the morning today when the suit was listed before the honorable court do hypothetical now that we intend to do this the court may do that and, and it's legally incorrect to say an amendment in a written statement has a bearing on an exhibit 5 decided on affidavits plus in fact today morning when the commercial suit was listed before the honorable court we made a request that the matter is this civil application is listed today before your lordships at 4:45 pm grant us an adjournment we will inform the court about the outcome of this proceeding the honorable trial court says that come at 5:15 and inform us that is why this anxiety matters that there is no trial court also understands that this is no connect so therefore it is it is rightly said that you need to examine it independently you need to argue it independently and if you just look at the case law you will find out that and if the court chooses not to do it ignore it you can always come before this court that is that is where malus i'm i am before you can always court, come, that, but not in nm not in your exhibit 5 that we're going to examine it malus i am saying i am saying that today with with due respect malus this amendment application otherwise hmm. if it awaits the outcome of the uh, uh, I, i mean the decision of this proceeding otherwise there is no harm for the respondents also there before is, the there trial. is no harm we agree to 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 that extent we we agree that this can also be argued after a week but you're connecting the two is not something where we are with you malus 
grateful. In, in that case, Malas, may I only request mm. that my prayer in the civil application today is only to the extent that till the time your lordships decide on the appeal from order, either way, whatever the outcome is, at least at that time, at least if the court can be called upon to await the outcome, let this we, application we shall, be argued. We shall say that you, you can uh, make a request to the court. Please, Manoj. But if, if you want us to say that till the outcome of this, we will definitely say that this too has no connection. In that case, Manoj, your lordships may say that uh, liberty would be there Either for us to apply before the trial court and trial we, court may consider. We can, we can say that uh, you may make a request to the Please, trial Manoj. court concern and you can withdraw this. We otherwise, if we say that we are allowing, I'm, I'm willing to do that, Malas. So therefore, I'm saying if the lordships may reserve that liberty, per, uh, permitting us to apply before yes. the trial court, and trial court yes. will consider it in that case. Because it, it really puts a cloud over the trial court, as if it is in a hurry for doing something, it may as well reject it. And you have applied for time for three times. Court has granted it. So to say, no, no, look, this hurry, as if Malas the. Factually, my no with, with great no, difficulty, and, and, and uh, the counterpart of Mr. Joshi, who appears before the trial court, also would agree with this. That both of us, we jointly made a request before the trial court, and despite which the trial court said that no, no, I want to proceed with the but, matter. But at the same time, we do we do not please know why this why this anxiety. Please, please, no, we do not know as to why this anxiety pursue it independently. Please, please, please. And you will need to pursue it independently. Please, please. I am, we are not running away. In fact, we have filed our reply immediately. The reply has been filed to this application. And if in case we do not know. We, we have uh, preliminarily examined as to what are they wanting to include yes, and how for broad they want to make it. Yes. But if it actually challenges or is it uh, it really changes the very nature, court shall have to look into that. Yes. It is bound to look into absolutely, that because Malas. that is the criteria for it to allow or to allow. Absolutely, Malas, no doubt about it. Our only request before the trial court has been uh, on, in simple terms that we are awaiting the outcome and let us hear this application I only think, after that. I think uh, there is something, you know, on your part, some introspection is needed. <laughs> Malaj, I, I would... Sir, sir, try to go more legally and maybe court will hear you. Please, Malaj. So you, that's what you need to do. And we always make it very clear in our, our orders also any observations it that we make will correct. not have any bias. Correct. Yes. Yes. So yes. Even if documents are produced later, it has no impact on an Exhibit 5 order passed. Early. Civil application, one of 23. What do you want to do? Well, we'll withdraw with liberty to apply and trial court may consider if a lot of can This is an application oh, seeking the following reliefs. After arguing for some time, the learned advocate seeks to withdraw this application with the liberty to approach the trial court for appropriate request Lord. at its end. Your Lord, Once sir, any such request is made, it shall be dealt with in its it will be dealt with on its own merit. Please, ma'am. Great. Mm. Just... Yes, he the rest of the advocates can leave. Yes, Mr. Patel. Uh, this was a note filed pursuant to which the matter was listed on Friday the 10th. Just a moment. Hmm? Fifty lakhs has been deposited. Lord Chief, please. So this matter, the first appeal needs to be uh, taken up for. Uh, it was listed on ten, the Friday, but uh, it could not. Be if he, it could not be taken up uh, because of Lord the Chief. reference. Okay, that's right. This can be uh, posted on uh, Friday, next Friday. Lord, great.